What's good, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy, Coach Smooth. Give me two seconds. Yes, yeah, sir. We back. We back. We back. Let's get to it, baby. Let's get to it. Let's go. Run it up. Let's go. Woo. A little tired. Let's get to it, though. What's good, everybody? How we feeling tonight? How we feeling tonight? Run it up, run it up. We here, we kicking it off. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I know y'all surprised. Y'all wouldn't expect it smooth, huh? Let's get it, let's get it. What's good? Run it up, run it up, run it up. $3 super chat popped tonight off from my guy Fred Turner with the super sticker. Let's go, appreciate that. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go. LaQuasia, how you feeling? How you feeling, sis? What's good? Auntie Janet in the building. Let's go. Let's go. Carla, how y'all feeling tonight? Kimberly, how you feeling? Jay Jackson, how you feeling, brother? Let's go. Steven, how you feeling? Paul, what's good? LaQuasia, 
Auntie, everybody running it up. Patriot Life Travel for New Sports. Let's go. Let's go. Fred Turner, how you feeling? Cuz who? That's family right there. Let's go. Morty in the chat. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. BT in the days. What's good, family? What's good, John? What's good, Kimberly? What's good? Come on, talk to me. Katrina, what's good? Let's go. Good to see you, Marty. Good to see you, family. Good to see you too, man. What's up, Philip? How you feeling? Good evening, everybody. Joseph, how you feeling? Steven, everybody. Monica, Gil, what's good? Carla, let's go. Come on now. Joshua, Joshua, what's good, family? How you feeling? Roll tide to everybody in the chat, man. Appreciate y'all for turning up tonight, pulling up for your boy. Listen, the numbers are low right now. We wasn't expecting to start at six. You know what I'm saying? Not, not with Coach Smoot, right? We wasn't, we wasn't expecting to kick off with Coach Smoot, right? I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. That nap I had, oh my lord, oh my Jesus. Let me, let me take a little sip. Good. Let's get it, baby. How y'all feeling tonight, man? My allergies been acting up, so I took me some Benadryl early. Woo, shoulda did that. Everybody feeling good? That's good, man. Chicken waffles, is it good? <laughs> Chicken and waffles is good. I feel you, boy. I feel you. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't uh, mind having a good chicken and waffle combination sometime soon. My mom and Foster's, my sister and Big Sandy. Whoa, my homeboys in T-Town. Okay, Fred. Your Bama boy. Who went through? How we feeling tonight, though, y'all? <clears throat> I'm feeling good. I took me a winning to, uh, to the chiropractor. Ate a good meal. After that segment, I was dead. Took me some Benadryl. I was dead. <laughs> Give y'all some good news, man. You know what? It's been pretty quiet today. It's been pretty quiet today. That's a good thing. We ain't had nobody hit the portal. Or nobody talk about hitting the portal. So I guess that's a good thing. Let me check my alerts one last time before we get our, uh, get this thing kicked off tonight. We do got some segments uh, that we're going to jump into. Right? He said, <laughs> Oh, snap. Who is this? Hmm, okay. Okay. I ain't been on my phone, y'all, so I'm seeing some things. Okay. We got some, we don't have no crazy news today, but I got some stuff to investigate. Not investigate. I got some information to find for y'all. Sweet 16. Yes. Let's go, Bama. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think that we was gonna make it this far, but I like our chances again, UNC. I like our chances. Only, and I'm gonna say only, if we show up like we did against uh, Grand Canyon, and I mean just the, from an effort standpoint, I feel like the shots will start falling, but from an effort standpoint, it gotta be high intensity from the jump. Gotta be high intensity from the jump. Can't come out half-stepping. If we do, it's gonna get ugly for us. Uh, let me share this screen right here so I can bring these topics up for today. Excited, man, to get into this, um, to these segments tonight. And uh, before we jump all the way into everything, man, let's pay some bills. Let's let's talk to our sponsors real quick. Uh, shout out to Residence Inn in Ocean City, Maryland. And then also um, shout out to uh, RogueShop.com, the CBD family. They, they helping us out, hooking us up with our CBD oils um, for our body pains, aches and pains, uh, recuperation, and holistic practices, all of that good stuff. And then also shout out to uh, Demetrius Maynard of the Maynard Group. Appreciate Demetrius and the main group for the showing love, all three of these sponsors. And with that being said, Kyle, take it away. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code 
LPR for special Bamo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com, use the promo code Bamo. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We appreciate y'all, man. Definitely do. I love the fact that you guys are hyped about representing Bama Football on YouTube and what we're doing. Thank you to all the fan funders and all the sponsors that keep us going. And like the video says, we definitely encourage you all to become fan funders um, this this is free to watch, but it's not free to operate. So when you donate, when you contribute by uh, becoming a fan funder, super chatting or liking and sharing, it helps the channel continue to grow, produces that algorithm and that. Uh... OK, I think we're good. All right, so that should be good. All right, so how everybody doing, though? That's good. Let's get it. We had 131. Make sure y'all run the likes up, man. I'm feeling good tonight. Um, I took a real good nap. And today, tonight, I had to stick with my segments because, you know, we got other panelists coming, uh, following me. We got Coach Sean, right? And then after Coach Sean, Jake and uh, Jake and Jarek, they'll be on. Jake and Jarek. <laughs> the Jake and Jarek show, they'll be on to close out tonight. Um, we're switching it up, kind of trying to start something new um, to start giving our sponsors they shout outs trying to set a, a presence for the night, right? And then uh, get these guys active and going. They've been doing such a great job. I don't need to close no more. We got uh, we got plenty of closes on the panel right now. So I'm, I'm liking the, the switch up. I'm liking the change up. Shout out to, let me see. Shout out to my people. Piano Man 61 says, uh, with 1999 Super Chat says, thanks coach for all you do for, for us here. Roll Tide, bro, much love, man. And again, we started off with Fred Turner with a $3 super sticker. And then Stephen Craig also became a new member. So hopefully Stephen is here. Thank you. Welcome to becoming a part of the team. We appreciate you, family. We really do. We really do. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it today. Uh, hold on. Did I? Uh, I thought I, sw I thought I fixed it. Apparently I didn't. Or is it? Oh, here it is. Look. We got some uh some spell check errors out here. That's what happened when you be rushing. I got y'all though. Don't talk about me too bad. Pray for me. Don't date for me. Whoa. Whoa. I'll share this one instead. All right, now we look like we we on something. Here we go. We good? Yeah, I think we good now. Paul Ward with the 199 Super Chat. What's up, my boy? Alan Thompson just jumped in the chat. He says, Smook from Utah. What up? You from Utah? Ooh, how the weather is out there right now? It's probably feeling good. It's March. Y'all probably got, like, nice weather up in Utah during March. Just coming out of that little wintry feel. Y'all have some true springs, don't it? Yeah, see? Offense mismatch maker. <laughs> Look, see? Ah, uh, what's up? What Patrick said? Jackie White, y'all gave it, y'all give it a hell, a, a day. I would love to be there, but we'll be at the Masters that Saturday and Sunday. Ooh. 
the masters what you got going on at the masters you working it mm -hmm. you the best host smooth ah oh, nah i just like to pop this thing off sometimes man it's monday i, I really want to uh i really want to just bring some energy tonight give us a chance to get the numbers up and i want to talk about some good stuff some good topics before everybody gets into like nfl talk and political talk want to end the day with bama and let them kind of they because they have great discussions man that that are outside of college ball that i love to uh you know set up for them so let's get into it y'all let's jump into it um y'all know it's the evening time i gotta bring my energy not necessarily my i gotta bring my levels down a little bit so if i'm so it looks like i'm whispering i am <laughs> i am trying to keep it down so question of the day question of the day it's been like the question of the week question of the month question since coach Kalen DeBoer has taken over can coach Kalen DeBoer recruit in the south that's the question of the day real simple is, is coach Kalen DeBoer recruiting in the SEC is he competing and recruiting in the SEC and my thing is you'll be lying if you said he wasn't right it would be a, a straight up lie if you were saying that he isn't right the hypocrisy you know the hypocrisy if you was to say he wasn't it would be crazy because one thing i will say is anytime your first five commits are composite ratings they average out to 90 90 four stars which you got four stars you got two guys that's probably going to be end up being five stars but by the final rankings once they put out um I mean, look at the quality of players we got. Look at the quality of players we got. Let me go ahead and pull this graphic up right here. Look at the quality. Look at the quality of players that Alabama already has committed. We're gonna share this tab. You got Daryl Johnson, ninety-three four-star. Derek Smith, 92 four star, and Anthony Rogers, 92 four star, Antonio Coleman, 92 four star. I mean, Miles Johnson. Like, come on, man. The first five are just. And then you start getting around to those high rank, what they call three stars. We know Abdul Sanders is not a three star. We know Zamir Smith and Lou Metz. We know those guys aren't three stars. We know they aren't. You could turn their film on and just see it. Like, there's, there's no way. And that's why I think rivals gets the respect that I think I, you know, I give them, you know, um, because of that, you know, they, they, they go out there and they're at these camps evaluate. You got on three guys. That's not even, let me not speak on this. Let me not, let me not, you know, people get mad when you tell the truth about stuff, right? People hate when you tell the truth about stuff. So you got You got to be, I'm just playing. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that tonight. We're going to be good. We're going to be real good tonight. We're going to be real good tonight. Uh, let me make sure I got the right graphic up, y'all. That's not the right one. Here go the right one. So let's end that one. Here we go. Now we back in there. We back in in in. We back in frame. We back in good place. So question of the day: Can we recruit? Uh, yes. I I really I really, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna stand up and say uh, I'm killing the narrative that Alabama can't recruit. I'm um, looking at the names that we've already got committed. Right, like I said, a lot of defensive guys. Um, committed already they loving this this new uh defensive schematics under k womack and the energy that's being brought with it right the scheme in itself is an attack scheme um out of the the nickel not what we're used to containment and overthinking right which was very good for his time shout out coach Saban and the defensive staffs that he brought through during his time during his tenure um but the game started to change and we were falling a few steps behind and so uh, we, we're going to see how this adjustment is with this new this new staff um, and their defensive philosophies and what the uh, what the, what that's going to entail, right? Also, you look at the recruits that we're offering, man. And I'm gonna just run down some names that have uh, you know that that we've offered that are on the on the horizon. Uh, you all know the Carrollton, Georgia product, Julian, Julian Lewis. We offered him. Um, he is definitely on the hook, trying to see what where his his uh final decisions are going to be uh a name that i was talking about today that came up on our radar real heavy is a guy out of lee county in leesburg georgia 
and Usman Kroma. Uh, I mean, just talking about him earlier today, uh, looking at some of the buzz around him and his interest in Alabama. If we were somehow to be able to get him committed in his running back class, along with Jordan Davison, I mean, the, the the wealth of riches is just way too much. Somebody's going to be moving along and, and having to commit somewhere else to be realistic. Um, <clears throat> but the fact that it's a it's even a conversation, that goes to show you what this, this staff is doing when it comes to recruiting, right? Um, looking at defense, I mean, uh, uh, wide receivers in that class, Travis Smith Jr., right? You're looking at um, Dalen McCutcheon. You're looking at we have one uh, Dalen Upshaw of Central Phoenix City um, coming here tomorrow for a visit. So that's going to be cool to see how that turns out. Uh, Nashawn Montgomery, uh, Quanell Farrakhan, you know, uh, I, I, I just I see so much talent in that wide receiver room. It's going to be hard to see how they all fit. But the fact that they're excited about having the opportunity or even considering Alabama, that goes to show you the quality that we're pulling on this dog on on this um, on this trail with our coaching staff and their recruiting. Lincoln Cure, I, I'm I'm excited about this young man. I really think we got him on, like we locked him in um, with his last visit. I think he's way more interested in what the sites are are giving. Right. Uh, let's look at the offensive tackles again. David Sanders, another kid, and Ty Haywood. Those guys, I, I really see us securing, if not both of them, minimum David Sanders. Um, and, and Ty Haywood, you know what? It, it would be hard for me not to believe that Ty Haywood doesn't commit to us. So, I mean, I'm looking at these quality recruits, y'all. And I'm going to bring this graphic back up. I'm going to bring this graphic back up. Maybe y'all can pay attention and kind of not pay attention, but maybe I can show y'all what some of these names are and what they mean when you're talking about possibly having their commitment. Let's just look at the uh, wide receivers. Cornell X Farrakhan, right? Four star, 90. Nashawn Montgomery, another highly rated three star. I don't know if y'all seen the um, highlight of Nashawn Montgomery doing the one hand snag in the seven on seven match this past weekend. I shared it on Twitter and I asked him to calm down until it's time for him to commit to Batman. And uh, he laughed at it. He laughed at it. Again, another four star highly rated Lincoln Cure. These are all guys that I know for a fact are really close to, you know, being committed to Alabama. Number one player in, in this class, uh, number one offensive lineman. Looking at David Sanders Jr., um, that was a troll page that came out earlier, but we plan on trying to get him on soon. Um, like I said, Ty Haywood, another another guy, highly rated, 6'5", 285. Um, and then this guy, Lamont Rogers, I really think we have a good chance at him. We've been recruiting the, the state of Texas heavy um, when, it came, when it comes down to the offensive lineman. And um, this class is no different. Uh, like I said, I think we were pretty solid on our tackles. Um, and Mal Waldrop, that's another kid that I'm excited about. I think he's going to end up being a, maybe a center here, you know. Um, or I don't know, he might slide the guard. But 6'5", 290, athletic kid, I'm excited for him um, to even be on the on the roster, I mean, on the target list. Uh, coming from Phoenix City, that's hometown kid. Um, and like I said, I, I really don't see us going too heavy for offensive linemen in this class, right? Um, probably some highly tied of three stars, like uh Sianna Tohi, like he's a solid kid out at Modern Day. Y'all see what type of impact we're having at Modern Day with Marcus Harris, um, Jordan Davison. Uh, who's the commit we just got from um, or who's the guy we just offered from Modern Day? <sighs> Dang, I can't remember. But uh pretty solid, pretty solid. What they said, uh, 176 to 83. What happened? Somebody, Langston Hall was pretty. Yes, he definitely was. That's a 26 kid, though. That's the funny thing about it. He's only a 26 kid. <laughs> do you think all of the young DBs stay if they don't play early coach smooth? I, I do. I do. I think uh, this group is pretty tight-knit, uh, especially the young guys. Um, if anybody was, I was worried about leaving, it probably would be one of the veterans uh, because of the young guys and their improvement. And how they're getting implemented early in spring. Uh, Red Morgan, uh, luckily he's got a mentor in Devontae Smith and Malachi Moore who want, they don't care about the numbers, they, they want to win. So uh, you got, you, it's a good locker room, especially in the secondary. Um, but it's inevitable, right? It's inevitable. People want to play. Not everybody can be on the field at the same time. Shout out to Real Wear 100 with the uh, showing love, man. Roll tie to you, uh, John M. Smook. Is it possible? We could see a lot of Ty Simpson with the offensive weapons we do have. 
I think it is a good opportunity for him to get a lot of uh, the first four weeks of the season. I think we'll see a lot of Ty Simpson late game, you know, mid third quarter, fourth quarter, and really able to showcase some of what he's going to bring to the table in the offense. Um, like I said, it's it's uh, one thing to be winning and blowing team out and then to take the foot off the gas, but Kalen DeBoer is not that type of coach. He is not the type of coach. And I feel like this is the time where you got to put teams on notice in this day and age to get the respect and the rankings. You got to you got to you got to beat teams that you're supposed to beat by 50. You got to beat them by 80. You know, that's what it is now. It's good. Aaron McGuire, appreciate that, man. Much love, family. Yeah, Abdul, Abdul Sanders. That was the modern day kid. Appreciate that, uh, Joshua. I mean, we 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 got some good good ties over there in modern day. Um, I mean, we got ties in all the the major powerhouses across the country. Modern day, St. John's Bosco, uh, IMG. You go down there in the North Texas around Dallas area, right? Denton, Dallas, Fort Worth, all those areas. McKinney, we got all those different spots. Um, kind of got some nice ties. Is Bubba Hampton on campus? Yes, Bubba Hampton is on campus. He's alive and he's well. And he's definitely showing up and making plays. Um, it's a lot of athletes out here. A lot of athletes that are making a lot of plays on the field. So, uh, listen, listening from Boise, Idaho. Hey, much love, man. Roll Tide. Thank you for jumping in on uh, tonight's Bama Football on YouTube segment, The Smook Scoop. I am Coach Smook of Bama Football on YouTube, team reporter, recruiting inside and director player, uh, player personnel, uh, meaning I handle all of the movement when it comes to our interviews and everything with the players get them on here, their families, hell and all that, making sure that we're giving God the best energy, the best setup for providing exposure for our, our recruits and our targets and our players that are currently on roster. So appreciate you for standing in and pulling up with us. It's always a good time. I'm not getting caught up in the stars. Me neither. Me neither. Marty, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's just out, out of respect for what these recruiting sites do, right? You try to you try to you try to rely on that to kind of validate what some of these players' worth is. But when you have a guy like Luke Metz and Zamir Smith as a three-star, that's where my that's where my like you have two, you have two other major sites that have them as four stars, you know. But it is what it is. And I talked to the both of those young men and their feels about that. The right energy, the right, the right motivation behind it. Oh, yeah. But that's how they feel. Let them feel that way. I'm gonna show them three stars, right? I'm gonna show him a three star. Yeah, yeah, number twenty one. That's uh, Bubba Hampton. What's up, Ant? How you feeling, Cuzzo? You feeling good, brother? Yeah, we got people from all over the country listening in. Yeah, everybody. Hey, right now, let's run it up. Listen, let's 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 run it up. Where you watching from? Let's take the next thirty seconds. I'm gonna acknowledge everybody where they're watching from before we jump into our next segment. Where you watching from? Everybody, right now. Everybody, right now. Run it up. Let me know where you're watching from. Those are the next comments on the screen. Let me go full screen with this. We're gonna have a little fun. Go have a little fun. Florence, Alabama in the house. Trustville, Alabama in the house. Let's go. Another Florence, Alabama, Montgomery. Where I see you, Montgomery, Alabama in the house. Central New York is in the house. Yeah. Let's go. Brunswick, Georgia is in the house. Yes, Pell City. Yes. Pell City in the house. T Town in the building. What's up, Doug? PJ. You in the building? Hey, why you won't be coming outside with Coach Smook? I be in T-Town. We be outside on Fridays and Saturdays. Outside with Coach Smook. Come hang out this weekend if you in the area. Listen, we doing something this weekend, too. Y'all let me know. We it's, we said skating or something. Panama City, Florida. Ooh, so many memories in Panama City. Let's go. Tuscaloosa, yes, go. Tip, where you was? Outside with Coach Smook. I need to be outside with Coach Smook when they step out. Myrtle Beach, Salt Lake City, Utah is in the house. Russellville, Alabama, Charlotte, North Carolina, Butler. I know where that's at. Jasper. I know where that's at. Antonio Snell. He down there in, in Panama City. Yes, sir. Grish Ferry Lake, Arkansas. What? Welcome, Arkansas, in the building. We got Bama in Arkansas. What's up, Smook Montgomery, Alabama, Kimberly? I know. That's a look. That's family right there. Canton, Ohio. We got some Ohio folks. We had some Bucknuts fans in here earlier. Rayford, North Carolina, LaQuasia down there in the Gump, grocery store parking lot. <laughs> oh man, Nuga, Tennessee, Chattanooga. We out there in Chattanooga, Madison, Alabama, Sarah, Mobile, Mobile, 
Alabama. <laughs> yes, sir. The mobile build out there, boy. New Jersey in the building. Let's go, man. Hey, Birmingham in the building. I was in Birmingham the other day. I do not like driving through Birmingham. I'll tell you that, boy. Prattville in the back in, in in the in the city. You know what I'm saying? It's in the house. Gil Cruz out there in Brooklyn. You already know Decatur. Look, y'all showing up. Valley, Hawkinsville, T Town again. Listen, if y'all in T Town, listen, I need to uh I need to hurry up and get in my place. So if y'all know some something, like if I can move in tomorrow somewhere, please let me know. Cause I'm I'm ready to stretch out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I like to be loud. And uh, I'm trying to respect my brother and sister spot. Like, for real, they really have been a blessing to my life, allowing me to hold it down here until my spot is ready. So, ooh, as soon as I get my spot, though, God, I thank you. Athens, Alabama's out here. Let's go. California, let's go. Littleton, Colorado, what? Y'all, we are crazy, man. Y'all are crazy. St. Louis, Missouri in the house. Antioch, Tennessee is in the house, man. Beham from uh, one of our members, Joseph. How you feeling tonight? Nicole says she had behind Wichita, Kansas. Ooh, Kansas. You got somebody from Gaston that's in Kansas. Bro, we are deep tonight. We are really heavy here, here tonight. We got Texas. We got Chattanooga again. We got Indianapolis. What? Come on, man. That means we're getting reach, man. That means we're getting some reach, y'all. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. It's Coach Smook of Bama Football on YouTube. If you want to check me out on my socials, it's at Coach Smook on every platform. I love to interact with my, my my people, my supporters, my family, all my Bama family. Love to interact with you guys and uh, love the fact that you all are here tonight. What was what that? Bison King Stan, the new member says, Smooth, can I get a shout out from the Canadian Tide fans? Hey, roll Tide up in Canada. Y'all don't give a piss about them, but the Tide. Uh, K, that's what y'all say. K, right? <laughs> oh man bison hey much love man hey bring the canada fans on tonight to share it up tell canada that the tide is rolling in canada too and we are happy to have that type of reach hey share it we accept all of our tide family we don't care if you've been a tide fan for two days or two 200 years we want you to know that we appreciate y'all a you know what i'm saying from canada a let me turn my hat sideways. Canada A, you know what I'm saying? Canada and A. That's what hey, listen, listen here. I got a I got a partner that I jump in the uh, Twitter spaces with. His name is Tommy. And they do this little thing, like this little, you know, old redneck. You hear me? Listen, y'all need to do that in Canada. You hear me, A? <laughs> I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. Much love, y'all. Appreciate y'all for participating, showing where you're from, representing, putting on for your cities. Let's get into our next segment, all right? Let's get into our next segment. Listen, this is something that I think everybody's excited about. This offense, Coach Kalen DeBoer and his staff, what they did at Washington, what they did at Fresno, what they did at uh, 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 Indiana. I mean, every stop that he's had as an uh, offensive coordinator slash head coach is like you can't do anything but be excited about what he does, the type of production that he gets. So let's jump in and talk about a few offensive mismatches that I think are going to be key to the success of this defense, I mean, this offense going into the season. Number one, let's look at the quarterback position. The fact that we have two quarterbacks that should that could start, like literally, no questions asked, maybe three in Dylan Lonegan. Um, but two quarterbacks that can literally go and start anywhere in the country right now, that's a mismatch problem. It's like, what do you, what do you, you, you pick your poison. Um, you kind of have confidence in the fact that, you know, if one neither has to has to be, play uh reserves right they get to go out play balls to the wall 110 percent make the extra effort plays run somebody over if you feel like you need to like take those chances because the guy behind you if you really and truly trust the mantra that's being preached this season you're going to trust the guy behind you the guy next to you so this this quarterback room is definitely a mismatch problem uh looking at the wide receiver room the amount of depth and the talent let's include the tight ends in there you look at the likes of uh, Jalen Hill, Caleb Odom out there on the perimeter. Uh, you go to the tight end room. You look at um, uh, Danny Lewis. You look at CJ Dupree, Robbie Oots, Josh Cuevas. All four of those guys are going to see big time minutes. They're going to see a solid rotation of, of two and two. You know, um, Jay Lindsey, who's up and coming. You're going to see him start to phase into uh, more so what, what Robbie Oates oops does in the at the h back position being that hybrid guy being basically our our new age fullback in this offense 
And then you you start looking outside of that. You start getting to the, to the other side of the perimeter in that wide receiver room. You're looking at the likes of Kobe Prentice, Bubba Hampton, Amari Jefferson, all those guys getting looks at, at the slot. Cole Adams, right? Cole Adams is a guy that I saw very active during um, the spring scrimmage day um, as far as getting reps and, 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 and implementing, being implemented into the scheme, right? Um, look at the likes of uh, Kendrick Law, Jeremy Bernard. You got a... Uh, uh jared hamilton out there still still putting in uh work still doing things making plays and then you think about the guys that's not even on campus yet rico scott ryan williams right these guys are going to be impact players they want they're not they may not see starter type minutes but when they're on the field they're going to make plays and there will be opportunities for them to make plays slide to the running back room man offensive mismatches you think about the way that jam miller can catch out of the backfield right you look at him, he's a mismatch problem. You look at Justice Haynes' his running style. How solid of a runner he is, how explosive he is in the short game, in the long game. Like, I mean, Justice Haynes is your premier running back. He's your all-around, do-it-all running back. They can do everything good. Catch out the backfield, pass block, all of that. Jam Miller doesn't get a lot of uh, credit for his pass blocking, but you got you all are going to see that. And then, surprisingly, I'm seeing, I'm seeing and hearing a lot of buzz around Daniel Hill, the true freshman, a monster of a running back. Uh, been seeing him go with a lot of the twos, right? Him and Richard Young splitting reps with the twos. Uh, Daniel Hill is a huge running back to be a true freshman. 6'1", 231 pounds. The young man is going to get his opportunities early in the season. Um, and Richard Young also. Uh, I, I hope I hope Richard Young really stays the course and, and continues to compete because he can be an asset. Maybe not be the premier back like he feels he needs to be. But he will definitely be a huge part of the success of what this run game could do with this offense. And the running back room is 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 just wealthy. You know, you still got Kevin Riley. He'll be on campus soon. And there's a, a walk on running back there, too, that uh, he looks pretty nice. And I think y'all are going to be surprised, you know, hearing his name, seeing that he might be getting looks. And actually, he's in the film right now. Uh, let me see. 29. A little scat back. 29 is a little scat back. A little they had him doing like a whole bunch of screen stuff right and he's fast he's fast he he reminds me of like a darren spoils type feel um but yeah <laughs> here's to all the bama's ladies out there what's that ah oh, jack burton don't come in here <laughs> don't come in here with that jack what are you talking about man hook him what hook him what Man, y'all boys gonna be down bad this year, man. Y'all gonna be down bad. I feel like Texas is gonna have a problem this year. I really do, and I like Texas. I respect. I respectfully hate Texas. I mean, I, 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 I really, I like to see them do good. But when they play us, it seems like they, they just show up and they play their best game of their life. <laughs> so, uh, Jack Burton, welcome in though, man. We, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you. Hey, I so love the all the super chats or people that come in and comment, um, especially when we. Have people in here going crazy, talking crazy. What up, Smoot and Undefeated and always <laughs> train train wreck. How you feeling tonight, man? Yes, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. Oh man, Haynes a mix of Sean Alexander, D Harris, and Mark Ingram. I don't I don't know why y'all keep giving this man Sean Alexander. Sean Alexander wasn't him until like to to the NFL, y'all. He was all right at Bama. When I look at Justice Haynes, I look at uh, I think of um, Najee Harris explosion, Mark Ingram balance and, and, and running style as far as how square he is when he runs. Uh, flexibility and explosiveness. I see Kenyon Drake, um, you know, hands out of the backfield. I see Josh Jacobs like like ability. Like I see a mixture of all of those type of Bama backs if you really want to break them down. I don't see Sean Alexander. If Even if I had to go... Uh, go go old school i think his running style is more so of a uh, of a uh, coffee glenn coffee you know i'm just saying that's just mine but i i could see this you know what i can see the sean alexander reference but i'm just saying like sean alexander couldn't break away and sean alexander wasn't averaging six seven yards of carry like this 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 young man, he is a, a pop up. Kenyon Drake, y'all remember Kenyon Drake? It was very rare we saw Kenyon Drake not break off for six, seven yards of carry. 
Brian, you're not gonna get this argument from me tonight. I already told you how I felt about Sean, Sean Alexander and his time here at Bama. I mean, we're not gonna get that debate from me tonight. <laughs> y'all not gonna get that debate from me tonight. You missed that opportunity. I don't have the last segment tonight, so I won't give y'all that, that satisfaction. I'm sorry. Y'all know I usually would, right? You know I usually would, but I can't tonight. So jumping into the next segment, we need answers. Where do we need answers at? And I think we're starting to come. Ken and Darby, that's what I was thinking about, Matt Farms. That's, look, that's what I'm thinking about, all right? That's what I'm thinking about. I was thinking about, I said coffee, but I meant Ken and Darby. Uh, I, I think that that's that's more of a closer comparison with his running style. Sean Alexander was, man. And that's in the time. It's easy to get 40 TDs when you got 600 carries in the season, man. Come on, man. All right, stop. I'm not doing it. Listen, we need answers. We need answers. Where do we need answers at? I think the answers uh, are mainly in the trenches, right? At, at the offensive tackle position. Maybe not right tackle. Left tackle is looking like to be the spot um, where we're kind of unsure of who's going to man that position. And then also uh, linebackers, uh, as far as the edge, not who's going to play there, but who. Like, we know we got guys, right? Who's going to play there? <laughs> we want to know who. There's so much talent in that um in the offensive uh outside linebacker room. We don't know who's gonna play there. So that's the answers we need. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's dive into it as we uh rock out smooth. What you think about NFL banning the hip drop tackle? I'm done with the NFL. You know what, Ty? With how the equipment is changing in the NFL, and I appreciate the 499 super chat. I could understand why they they changing it. Um, you got femur. Like, if you get a femur, uh, a broken femur, you're done. You know how hard it is to come? And they, they've they already changed the equipment up, man. You're barely wearing anything on the field now. And, uh, you know, we used to rely on uh, football pads to protect us, right? Um, the the pads and things of that nature are getting so thin and small. Like, I'm all, you almost question if it's actually protecting. And um, But one thing I have noticed or one thing that I did see a study on it's like when you have those leagues that don't play with pads on, right? You see those leagues. A lot of them guys, they don't suffer injuries because you're forced to form tackle. You know, you're, you're kind of, you're you're more precautious. You, you're, you're more relentless as far as your pursuit, but you're more cautious to how you're tackling your form. And so um, I think they're trying to promote better form tackling, right, across the board. Uh, it does take away from the intensity of what we know it to be, but um, – it, it, it's definitely causing a lot of, of, of rumbles amongst the fan base. But appreciate the 499 Super Chat and uh, good question, man. Good question. Uh, we was talking about answers. So let's dive into it, y'all. Let's see. Uh, so if y'all had to ask what, what answers do we need? What, what answers? Um, I already said offensive line at the left tackle. Uh, from my reports and my observation, the two that were competing at right tackle were Miles McVay and Wilkin Formby. I honestly thought that we would see those two split, right? That they would be the guys getting the left tackle and the right tackle looks. But uh, things are shaping up differently. Um, you got uh, Miles McVay was the guy taking first team reps this past weekend, right, with the right at right tackle. Um, then you had uh, the right guard was Jaden Roberts, uh, center. J uh, Parker Brailsford was out there first this week. As y'all remember, before spring break, it was James Brockenmeyer. But there was also a phase where – they were switching out. So I think there's a good competition going on at the center position. Left tackle, you got uh, Tyler Booker. And where's my notepad again, y'all? Left tackle, you got Tyler Booker. He was, uh, you know, man in that position, getting coached up at one point. Pretty cool to see how Coach uh, Cap doesn't hold for anybody. Um, and behind uh, Tyler Booker, let me pull this back up. Behind Tyler Booker, some somebody that was, I, I was excited to see was Oldest Alanine out there with the second group also came in for Booker when uh, he was getting coached up. Had to run like two or three plays, I believe. Um, that was pretty solid. But then at the left tackle, we had Elijah Pritchett um, was starting off taking first team reps. And then you also had Nikhil Bertrand. So the two experienced guys, as you can see, they're trying to limit the amount of freshmen or young guys, lack of experienced personnel. Um <laughs> They're trying to limit that, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of like a telltale sign of what they feel is going to be the best look and best makeup for this offensive line going forward. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, McVay McVay is starting right now, but the week before I saw uh Formby 
with the first group. Coach Smoot, what's up? How you feeling today? Gary Bama for life with the $2 super chat. Man, I'm feeling great. I'm trying to get our uh our uh the segments out of the way because your boy is on a tight schedule tonight. We we gotta be within our time. Uh somebody said for me the secondary, Marquita, yes. Um, we need answers. You know, we've seen a lot of different formations, we've seen a lot, a lot of different personnel. Um, let me talk about what I saw. So we had um all at, at starting boundary corner in that first group, we saw one and number nine, which is the money Jackson and uh and in uh Jalen Mbakwe. And then behind Mbakwe was number 15, which I believe is uh is Xavier Brown, right? If I'm not mistaken. Or is that Mincy? 15 and 16 is Brown and Mincy, so I kind of get them mixed up every now and then. You got 15. So yeah, Xavier Brown. And then uh 16, you got uh Red Morgan, who was out there at the uh starting at uh starting at the 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 husky position right at that strong safety position uh smitty has a leg wrap on his leg i don't think it means anything because he's been practicing but um you know they probably allow red morgan a lot of time to you know get acquainted because you want a guy like smitty to maintain and stay healthy throughout this uh spring and i believe uh uh oh Uh oh, Coach Jean just got offered uh, St. John's Episcopal. St. John's Episcopal, St. Paul's. I'm sorry, I said St. John. But congrats, Coach. Much love. Hey, but um, corners. I think I think we're going to be solid out there. We just need to know who's out there. We got the likes of Jaleel Hurley out there competing. Xavier Brown, Mincy, and Bakwe. Those four are really competing for the opposite corner of Damani Jackson. And um, Damani Jackson is doing an awesome job out there making plays. Uh, I mean, he's grasping the concepts of what this this scheme is calling for him to do. This uh, the the primary base coverage we're going to see from these corners is like a match cover three, meaning um, they're gonna they're gonna basically man up underneath, right? Not going to cross into the seams or the or the you know the inside the numbers between the hash and the top of the numbers or bottom of the numbers, right? They're gonna they're gonna be boundary defenders, right? And they're going to be uh, containing a lot of the over top concepts that's going to be thrown at them with one high safety look and a lot of the underneath um, uh, dissecting is going to be left up to the Husky Rover and those uh, those linebackers, those inside linebackers. So um, getting those two perimeter guys solidified will be key. And I think that will be a good thing for us. Something about flipping y'all commits, et cetera. What are you talking about, uh, Jack? What about flipping commits? Austin Fritch. What if Pritchard beat out Proctor at left tackle? Um, I don't think Proctor, like, listen, I know everybody's kind of excited about this Caden Proctor stuff. I think Caden Proctor has a long way to go to get into the size and the frame. I appreciate my fault, Austin. Appreciate that 199 super chat. Um, it, we greatly appreciate it. And you also being a member, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, but listen, I don't think Proctor comes in with the net with the nod to be the starter. You know, he's missing a whole spring. This is a new offensive scheme. This is not something that he's used to running, right? But also physically, he got to get down underway. You don't, you won't see any guys over 330, 325, 330 on this offensive line coming into the fall. I guarantee it. Caden Proctor left this past season at 360, 365 or some crazy junk like that. Big guy can carry the weight, but. It's not going to be efficient for what this offense is uh this offensive line is asked to do so um appreciate that though <laughs> wait well the long way to go stuff with who y'all i don't think y'all understand what what this entails when it gets to this level Caden Proctor has a long way to go. He first he got to get in and lose weight. He got to learn the new offensive scheme. He's got to beat out guys who are proving themselves right now with film work and everything. He's not as elite as we gave him credit for. We saw that. We saw him go through his growing pains last year. We saw him get exposed. We saw him give up the most sacks as a true freshman. Yes, but still, 
you had other true freshmen who were just as highly touted as this young man so i really think he's going to have a lot of work to do there's some technique things if you listen to coach cap that were being taught last year Caden proctor did those great but there are some technique things that are trying to be implemented now that the rest of the guys are having an adjustment and learning curve adjusting to right they're adjusting to this it's taking them time i don't put it past that kate kate and proctor is going to have the same adjustment curve and because he's coming in the fall he's not going to be able to get out there to the fall there's not going to be many opportunities for him to make those leaps and bounds to jump in front of those guys who are here in spring proving themselves it is what it is you can say i'm wrong demetrius but it, it's a fact you you this this is not a, a cornerback where we needed one we have talented tackles on the roster and so the fact that he's not there to compete every day you can't you gotta miss me with that i don't care what you say and i light it up i continue to light it up in two years probably will be a top five pick yeah but he won't be a starter at the beginning of this season guarantee you that <laughs> guarantee you that y'all get off of him i'm telling you listen time to pull the belts out in a i'm pulling i'm politely pulling the belts out because a lot of people have the same feel about ryan williams coming on campus you you don't understand the progression and layering of this offense until you're there learning it right Hayden proctor is not there learning it i don't care how much film how many conversations until he gets on the field and is able to display that he can move and get out in space he struggled doing that last year he struggled getting in space last year that's why our offense was so limited we didn't have an athletic offensive line that could get out of space and put hats on helmets at every spot. You got Jaden Roberts, Tyler Booker, the only ones able to get out there and really implement getting out of space, pin and pull methods, right? Hayden Proctor struggled heavily trying to get out of space and put a hat on somebody. So, and it ain't that he's soft. I think he just has to go through that learning curve. He has the talent. For people that keep thinking that I'm saying he's not good, I'm not saying he's not good. It's just, would it be crazy for you all to expect a young man to come in that knows nothing about this offensive scheme to come in and jump some guys who got eight weeks or however many 15 practices plus right of learning it's film room personal time talking to coach cap getting coached up hands on like coach cap said he loves to be hands-on with his guys right so what he does is if, if he can't if he can't be hands-on with you if he can't get out there and show you how he gonna get out there and be hands-on with Caden Proctor and he ain't there yet I'm just asking he's got he's got he's got he's got so much work to do he got so much work to do hey i do know these facts wait till coach sean get ready coach sean go i guarantee you and, and he, he 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 ain't got me uh he ain't at the desk right now i could see he just logged in but i guarantee you i guarantee you man Jay Reed, he didn't go through it enough last year because even the last game of the season, he was getting beat up against Michigan. It's cool to disagree, Demetrius, but don't be mad. Don't be hiding when, when you come back and it, it's been proven. I'm telling you. Coach Sean, you want to weigh in on this? Because I'm good on that. Let's go. Let me pull him in here, y'all. What up, bro, bro? What's up with you, Coach Mook? How you doing, bro, bro? And I'm good, bro. They, they got me crunk up on this not crunk up they got me crunk up on this uh this Caden Proctor situation man once Kaden again Proctor? yeah they 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 believe this man gonna come in day one and start well we have one Demetrius thinks he's coming to start in day one um I I highlighted this before I let you take it um one the weight he, he gonna have to come off the weight clearly <clears throat> two uh he's not he's not privy to being in the system and learning a whole new scheme this is this is nothing he did last year is going to be applied football is football to a certain degree as an offensive tackle in this style of offense there are intricacies and techniques that you have to learn that was one thing that coach cap who we were able to interview live and ask questions technique is something that everybody in this offensive line group has gone through and not necessarily struggled that going through a learning curve so you add all that up look at what Caden Proctor struggled with technique last year we talked about his footwork last year being too heavy his footwork was off when he did engage he was solid he improved throughout the year but he's still at the end of the year against better talent at Michigan he was still getting exposed I think he's going to have to go through a learning curve and can he figure it out before the kickoff of, of fall season I don't think so it's too much going on and then you got other guys out there proving themselves showing that they're worthy for the position that's just my take on it what's your take on it man Oh, I agree. Unless Caden Proctor comes in here like 30 pounds lighter, 
comes into the, the the when we start up for the season, as he comes in here in July or whenever he comes, and he's because this offense he gonna ask to be doing he gonna ask to pull, pull and counters and all type of stuff, man. That he that we didn't really have to do much of last year. Um, so he's definitely gonna be asked to do something completely different. And um, based off what I saw just last year, because that's all we have to go on. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a little, little road for him, you know, right now, man. Because it's just like you said, actually, it's actually right now a transitional period for our, the people that are there. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a little transitional period for Caden because it, this, this, this offense just is not a bunch of hat on a hat and lean on the people in front of you. He's gonna have to pull, you know, pin and pull. He's gonna have to, you know, pull to the weak side, strong side. He's gonna be asked to get out in space and 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 and. Anchor, that, you know, that wasn't a strong suit of his last year. That was yeah. not a strong suit of his. It, that's what, and that's why I was saying, like, we were very limited with our offensive line play last year. We were yeah. definitely limited, and uh, it, it's not a secret, you know. And he did good for what he was asked to do. We're not sitting there yeah. saying that he was horrible. He did give up the most sacks, right? He did give up, I mean, the most pressures from his position. There's nothing wrong with that. A true freshman is going to, that's going to happen, especially right. when you. You put him out on the island like you know this this offensive staff did last year you know he he did what he could but let's be realistic he went through that fire in a whole totally different system last season this system is new and like you said coach Sean, it requires you to get out of space and do things like you got to be athletic and yeah. Kaden has to lose weight if he wants if he wants to be able to be that guy for bama he's going to have to lose a lot of weight right yeah. and then you gotta you gotta pass up guys that's there that that are that are fit that are ready to play Nikhil bertrand elijah pritchett both of them are competing there and then you, you look at guys behind them you never know maybe miles and will can end up being our left and right tackle even though they're competing at right tackle right now maybe they end up being one and two uh right and left for that first group you never know so proctor hats it's an uphill battle it's an uphill climb definitely talented but he's not coming in starting day one i'm telling you that right now yeah. i'm telling you that right now I'm willing to bank it. Demetra says none of the other tackles on our roster would have done better. Who's to say that? Who's to say? Caden Proctor was just the biggest and he got the most opportunities. That's that's what it boils down to. Wilkin Formby, who is just as highly touted. You look at his film from high school, look at his skill set. To me, he was more technique and sound, more te technically sound and ready than than uh Caden Proctor. You had other recruiting analysts offensive line recruiting analysts that were talking about how what he uh will conform was the fact that Caden proctor was named the starter was literally simply because we were trying to get huge with our offensive line and you see how that paid off for us it, it was no separation in skill none of that so i think we'll see that this year i think we'll see that but yeah man Pritchard struggled way worse than proctor Hey, Pritchett was hurt. That that Pritchett was beat up bad. He came into the season hurt. He actually got uh, hurt two weeks before kickoff. So I, I mean, hopefully he's healthy enough. He looks good out there now. He looks he looks real nice out there now. Is this true right here? Is that true? Damian Harris just retired. Hmm. Let me look it up. Yeah. Wow. I'm just, ready. I'm but just he seeing, did, but he did have a neck injury. He did have a yeah. neck injury. Them junks not nothing to play with, man. Yeah, yeah, that changed your life. That's a whole fact. Them joints to change your life. I remember he left in the hospital. He had a that neck injury was no joke, man. It will change your life, man. I hope that's not true. I hope he okay, man. Damian Young, man. I hope that's okay. I hope that's I not true. I don't see nothing yet, but it's looking like some people are saying it though. I don't see nothing official. Man, yeah, that's crazy. Dang, man, that's hey, that's that's one of the. And that's why I be be tripping when people talk about you know players and their dedication to the game, man. I, when I was in the army, you know, I could just imagine like what football players go through because I went through it when I was in the army, being an infantry soldier, man, just expecting to get up every day and move, 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 and ground pounding and all that, man. It take a toll on your body. I went to the chiropractor today. It felt so good. Oh my god yeah i work with a couple of people like that that's like a lot of those guys never played no sport 
Like they just mm-hmm. them kind of dudes just never played. So all they see is the is the headlines and the selfishness and the complaining. And I tell them, man, y'all just don't know, bro. Getting up early in the morning, going to workouts, going to class, going to practice during the summer two times, three times a day. Man, getting hurt. A lot of times people don't even know, man. You be out, you know, you be out there playing injured. You don't even people don't even know. Listen, you know what I mean? Man, the, it, it's the craziness I heard around um around uh Jace McClellan last year. And people didn't even know that that young man played from the uh first quarter of the Tennessee game to the to the end of the season in that Michigan game. He played with a foot fracture. Yeah. For the whole year, basically, y'all. And still was able to muster up 800 total yards of rushing in a limited, in a limit. You talking about limited care? We 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 underutilized our whole running back room last year. We yeah. underutilized those guys. I like no that too. And, yeah. and that's one thing I am happy about this year. Uh, I don't think we're gonna under. They they're gonna be used. This running back room is gonna be used. I think it's a uh, it's probably one of those years where the numbers are sneaky. You have maybe an 800 yard back and a 1200 yard back in there, right? Uh, and, and then have another 400 and another 200. You know, I think I think we'll have it. We, we, this year is going to be a year to possibly break a lot of records when it comes to the offensive numbers and things of that nature. So, hey, Jermaine Burton too. That man's ankle would look like an orange way back early in the season. He still kept he kept playing on it, man. I was Jermaine telling the chat too. I was telling the chat earlier or uh, or. I think it was either yesterday or earlier today about um how how much uh these guys seem like they're looking at their nutrition and their their fitness their anatomical makeup yeah um, as even jermaine burton at pro day man he looked like a freaking stud he looked like yeah. a little miniature debo samuels build type dude like it was funny man like i mean quad just bulging man freaking yeah. hammy calf muscles is like he focused on them the lower extremities and uh because we know that's where his major injury was he had a major leg injury um early in his career that kind of pushed him back on the depth chart at, at georgia and kind of opened the door for him to um you know make the move to bama kind of I'm, I'm glad he did too because this last year he was definitely needed um i just did you a little quick one bro i ain't getting no I mean, appreciate that appreciate that bro bro i did good that looking. while we was talking <laughs> good looking man i was just gonna wing it and go through one myself man good, uh, I, good stuff I be forgetting, man. Um, they they they've they been real busy handling business. That's, yeah, because I don't damn, I, don't, I I can't get no no holler back or nothing. You know what they, I mean? Man, they be busy, busy. So yeah, I feel uh, like doing their thing. Oh snap! What's up, Coach Al in the chat? What he saying? A really good friend who I coached with was first round pick as a cornerback and played a couple of years before an injury cut his career short. He's gone to coach in the league for decades and is now a proud five DC. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. But that's how it is, man. You get forced in. Man, I got a friend, Brandon Barnes, played wide receiver at Russell County, ended up going to Alabama State. I think he played tight end wide receiver at state, played for a couple teams in the league, XFL, USFL, you know, and he's three years younger than me and is already fired from the game because, you know, he had uh I forget was it the detroit lions when he was playing for him he had a crazy freak injury bro in the uh spring game and uh they thought that was it for him he came back and went usfl had a solid year there and now he he really missing it now he get out there and run some routes he look <laughs> tell you if he get if he get another opportunity i guarantee somebody picking him up cynthia middleton with the five dollar soup chat said evening coach sean love you and smooth keep giving us the scoops roll tie roll hey much love much love, much cynthia. love cynthia thank you I know how that go, man. I got about a nine-inch scar on the back of my right Achilles. Mm. It'll rob you of the game. It'll rob you, bro. It will. Train, train wreck. This man said, can we mention the kickers for this dude? <laughs> we ain't talking about kickers today. We got a special uh, special team segment we're going to be doing uh, in the middle of the week. So y'all, be, y'all stick around for that. We got a cool little concept. The reason why we haven't been talking special teams is because it's an opportunity that we could have those guys on so uh that's gonna be cool um and then also we're trying to stick it around the um the offensive game plan or the offensive side of the ball and a lot of our segments because tomorrow um for post practice interviews we are going to be able to interview uh the oc i believe uh we got nick sheridan 
Um, we'll have offensive line coach, Coach Cap, Jamarcus Shepard, and then we'll have uh, Jalen Mitro, Jam Miller. I think they'll have Kendrick Law back out there again, and CJ Dupree, Tyler Booker. So they're gonna have five or six players out there. We're gonna be able to get a lot of interviews. Hopefully, hopefully, make sure we have two different setups this time. You know what'd be cool? I, I got a good idea that I think we're gonna be doing. Nah, Michael, you good? You good? But now nah, we we doing a special team segment here soon. Um, it's it's. You don't really get to see a lot of special teams, right? We only get to speculate during the day. We don't get to see them do much of anything. They're usually standing on the side um, doing drop kicks. But James Burnham is the leader in that room, of course, uh, the lead specialist. Um, you got some young guys that's out there. Uh, Connor Talty, the, the place kicker, he's going to be the guy to look forward to taking, uh, being the kicker, primary kicker for us this year. And then... Uh, I seen some young guys long, uh, long snapping. Uh, this guy Alex Rozier, he's funny. He's one of the senior, uh, the, the veteran guys. He has a different energy on the field. Number fifty-two. Yeah, just wait. He, he's a funny kid. Uh, it's another kid, uh, Neilan Hibbett out of Florida, Alabama, long snapper. That 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 the specialties room is funny. They got a personality about themselves, Sean. They don't act like uh, kickers and and place kickers and holders and snappers. They walk around like they linebackers and running backs. Like they <laughs> they talk trash to the other position groups. Like when when the D lineman running by, they kind of like you know bumping into them and you know make the a kickers. Little, the kickers, bro. They are yeah. funny, bro. They are funny, bro. So it's uh that's gonna be a fun group to watch, man. It's gonna be a fun group to watch, it's, and I think they're gonna bring some some energy to the sideline. I really so do. James, how you doing, James? They talking about Connor having a 50 connor got a leg it's just his control was just you could tell he was young based off his control but y'all i'm not gonna hold it up tonight man i'm done with my segment leading off listen y'all got coach sean up next with uh just my humble opinion with coach sean listen y'all show him love y'all know how to do it man my brother he goes in every time I'm proud of what he's doing how he's growing with this content and man we we just gonna keep going and giving y'all the best content available so with that being said I'm Coach Smook of Bama Football on YouTube. Much love for everybody showing up. Keep Wait, up. Coach. What's up? Are you uh, you coming back after or do, or, or, or do I close it out? Since nah, you're on that? Jay and, um, Jake and Jerry could be on with you. They'll come yep. after? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Coming after. Cool. So you'll see them pop in. And um, I'm going to leave my laptop up so y'all can keep the uh, – because you need your graphics. So I'll let you keep that up there. All right, brother. Thank you. Right, Appreciate Roll you, brother. Tide, man. Roll Tide, everybody in the chat. Much love. Y'all enjoy Coach Sean. Roll Tide, Coach Smook. Coach Smook always do a great job bringing the funk as usual. The funk is the truth, man. He always do a good job bringing the funk, man. You know, if you want the funk, that's where you got to go. You know what I mean? Much love to Coach Smook. Much love to all the coaches. Man, much love to all you guys, man. What are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Let me change this right quick. And we'll get to rolling and see who all in here. But, yeah, that special teams... Um, I don't know much about that, man, Michael. I wish I could give you some insight on that, brother. But I don't know. All I know is Connor Talty and um Burnip. And they got a few more kickers that is that are that is trying to um trying to um you know take Connor's job, I guess you should say. But uh, I think they got an entire special team segment coming up though. Like an entire full blown segment coming, you know. Let me see who all we got in here, man. Let me see who all we got in here. What's up, to Michael? What's up, Michael? Michael, how you doing, Broski? Wish I had some extra answers for that special teams, but that's one cloudy spot that I had because they just hadn't showed a lot. They just hadn't showed a lot with those special teams, man. Um. Shout out to Jack Burden. You up in here. Cameron Tumberland is in here. Moon Rocker, what's up with you, bro? How you feeling? Moon Rocker's in here. Kimberly Harmon. I'm glad you're in here, Kimberly. Shout out to you. What's up, Kimberly? Like I said, my brother Michael's in here. Trainwreck 70s in here. Sean Williams is in here. James Richards from Georgia. What's up, James? Shout out to you. Shout out to the University of Georgia. Uh, Cameron is in here. Jag, the ATL Jag is in here. What's up, Jag? How you doing? Glad you up in here, Jag. 
glad you up in here for sure jermaine mims is in here what's up jermaine nicole covington is in here glad you in here nicole shout out to you vanna carter's in here what's up vanna how you doing good to see you up in here vanna how you doing katrina blackman my sister's in here what's up katrina how was your day today hope it was good man hope everybody having a good day janet forsett is in here so you know we cracking so you know we cracking if janet is in here what's up janet how you doing i'm glad you were here mickey pate is in here uh jack burden ronda barnett is in here what's up ronda how you doing steven angle what's up steven how your day going bro uh sean wiley's in here um who else we got shaka guinness Con genghis khan what's up shaka genghis khan we just gonna call you cgk what's up cgk how you doing man hope everything going good for you broski good to see you up in here for sure uh carla bailey is in here carla glad you in here man for sure for sure uh marquita my neighbor is in here what's up marquita wendy six what's up bro how you feeling how you doing glad you up in here man k spray one is in here what's up k spray how you doing man hope everything good for you ronald thompson's in here ronald thompson what's up man i appreciate you running bro tied to you my friend it means a lot man thank you john m what's up man how you doing john what's going on man how you feeling how you doing uh morty m is in here what's up morty how you doing man um who else f from og f from og f from is in the house patriot life is in the house if patriot life is here you know it's time to get it cracking it's time to get it cracking man what's up patriot life hope everything going good for you bro hope your day going good Roll tide to you my friend Dr. 334 is in the house. What's up, Dr. 334? Road tie, broski. For sure. Um, Gary Bama for Life is in here. What's up, Gary? How you doing, man? Glad you up in here, man. Al, Coach Al, my broski, Coach Al is in here, man. Love Coach Al to death. You guys have one other thing about football as well. Coach Al, man, right there. Believe that. Joseph Davidson is in here. What's up, Joseph? How you feeling, man? Road tie to you, broski. Hope everything going good. Jared is in here. What's up, Jared? How you doing, man? Glad to see you up in here, man, for sure. T. Welch is in here. Anthony Harris is in here. Uh, Cedric Kirk is in here. Tony Jones is in here. Crimson Dad 813 is in here, right? Hey, Moon Rocker. Moon Rocker said CGK is the strongest name. <laughs> yeah, man. CGK. You know, Shaka Genghis Khan. You know what I mean? With a name like that, man, you, I think, you, you know, that's a belt to ass name right there, right? Shaka Genghis Khan, player. Yeah, 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 CGK, that's that's that's, that's tough, Moon Rocker, for sure. That's tough, man. Um, who else we got? Tough as Nails is in here. What's up, Tough as Nails? How you feeling? How you doing? Good to see you up in here, man. Uh, trap, 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 T-R-4-P, I guess that's Trap, Keed. Hashtag Young King. What's up with you, broski? Good to see you, man. Glad you up in here. Roll tie to you, man. Um, Christian Hughes is in here. Lisa Fitz you is up in here. What's up, Lisa? You know what I mean? Fit for a queen. That's good stuff right there, Lisa. Glad you up in here. Fitness is key. Um, who else we got in here, man? I think that's everybody. Shout out to you guys. Much love to you. Glad you up in here tapping in with Coach Son. Just a few little topics I wanted to talk about really, really quickly. And uh, I won't worry you long. And um, just see what you guys think. Um, you know, I, I, I've been reading a lot of headlines, guys. I've been reading a lot of headlines, man. Um, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention or not. I'm sure you have. But it's like every time we get a recruit, I see what's up, Byron Russell, Brian, Brian Russell, Brian. You know what's so crazy? I have a Byron that's in here with the little hat emoji, and I have a Brian Russell. You know what I mean? Shout out to you, Brian, man. Glad you're up in here, broski. I apologize for calling you him and him you. My bad, man. Please forgive me. What's up, Brian? Good to see you up in here, broski. Roll tied to you for sure. Um, I ain't seen Caitlin in a while, Moon Rocker. That's a fact. I hadn't seen Caitlin. That's shout out to Caitlin, wherever you are, Caitlin. Shout out to you um hope you get back up in here the chat miss you hope you big hope you get back in here soon real 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 fast vanna carter is in here as i said shout out to vanna how are you um 
every time we get a recruit guys i've been noticing that our rivals or or ops or or or, or whatever you want to call them always got something to say man grade a music what's up with you bro how you feeling man roll tide to you grade a and it's like it, it, it it's 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 amazing to me that teams that are supposed to be our rivals and things of that nature thank you Vanna. good stuff girl i'm glad you're up in here um teams are supposed to be our rivals and and and, and laquatia gordon is in here laquatia what's up man the decor queen what's up laquatia glad you in here marquita you already know it's like every time we get a recruit these dudes got something to say if you guys ask me right now name me three recruits on auburn's roster that they've got for 2025 i can't tell you not a damn one and i'm into recruiting i can't tell you not a damn one i can't tell you not a damn one bro not a damn one you know why i don't care <laughs> i don't care what auburn does i don't care what tennessee does i just don't care bro and i know that's that's cliche to say i don't care but i really mean i just don't care right shout out to patriot life starting it off as he does as he does shout out to patriot life gifting five bama football on youtube memberships with cal henderson for the bama on youtube football for bama football on youtube channel thank you patriot life as always man you always trying to keep everybody in green shout out to you man shout out to you hope you if you guys get one of those gifts make sure you say thank you to patriot life shout out to you patriot life man always setting it off broski we appreciate you more than you know man that's a whole fact that's a whole fact um yeah man so it's just like I, it, it matt farms what's up matt how you doing man glad you're up in here jack burden what's up jack so it's crazy when you see these guys tap i mean they really have an entire chats about alabama's recruits you know like 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 when did we start having full-blown chats about the recruits that alabama is getting or what other recruits that another school is getting you think you don't see georgia commenting on what the hell alabama's doing guess why guess why georgia is worried about georgia they don't give a damn what nobody else is doing right likewise with alabama you don't even see lsu fans commenting on lsu it's always these auburn and tennessee people right and ohio state people i was shocked when i seen them going in on alabama like like it, it was amazing it was amazing deborah ross child what's up with you deborah how you doing so it really 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 shocked me when i seen the auburn fa well it didn't shock me with the auburn fans right i mean hell they're auburn they don't have anything else to do but talk about alabama right you know texas too matt texas too but even texas jay towns and what's up og jay my broski what's up you know it's time to get a cracking if og from and og jay is in here man you know what i mean shout out to the both those guys man and patriot life all at the same time and moon rocker all and stephen angle and bruce seals and matt farms and marquita and kimberly and cynthia littleton everybody and janet everybody's in here so you know we got to get a crack and we got to turn the volume up just a little bit you know what i mean so, and Carla and Carla's in here so you Dr. 334 everybody man everybody Jared right Michael's in here so like we good we good right now so it just shocked me a little bit man it shocked me guys that so many teams had something to say about what Alabama was doing but you know what that tells me it tells me that even though these got Katrina Katrina's in here what man come on it's time to get it cracking so it shocked me what's up cedric cedric kirk what's up bro how you feeling man roll tide man sean williams in here you know what i mean so it did shock me though i knew auburn was going to come out the woodworks and come up with something you know how they do guys they always come with something right but when you saw them having full-blown chat rooms about alabama's recruits you seen ohio state fans chiming in some of their analysts chiming in and to see tennessee fans chiming in like tennessee like tennessee and auburn like tennessee and auburn are this close from being a damn swimming school like 
Do you play football at these schools? Do you even play football at these schools? Right? Like, bro, come on, man. You beat Alabama two years ago and you went haywire and tore your own goal down and took it from the stadium. You took your own goal from the stadium. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I think that was the first for me. We're going to tear the goal down. See that all the time, right? We're going to take it out of the stadium. So, <laughs> we don't even care what you're talking about. Your, your, your school colors are fluorescent orange. That's your school colors, man. You can't talk about nobody. Like, your damn colors is fluorescent. It glow in the dark. Like that type of orange. That's not even orange. That's fluorescent. Right? You Your school colors is the same color as the people that get the buggies at Walmart. So you won't run over their asses. Right? So I ain't paying them dudes no attention, man. It's, but it do shock me, Bruce. You know what I'm saying, bro? It do shock me that you, you instead of commenting on your own recruits, you're worried about Alabama's recruit. What's up, Mud? How you doing? So, if anything, that lets you know that the haters are upset that Bama is still Bama. They're upset that all these top kids are committing to Alabama. All these kids that are four-star right now, there's going to be five-stars, right? They argued for days that the Luke kid from Georgia was a three-star kid. You didn't even see Georgia fans saying nothing about that kid. You know why? Because Georgia just recently gave him an offer too, right? So you didn't even see the Georgia fan. That's why I got respect for Georgia. I won't even lie about it. I know their fans talk a lot, as some of ours do. But one thing I can say about Georgia, Georgia, worry about Georgia, right? You don't see them just going haywire unless we play each other or, you know, typical fan back and forth. Auburn and Tennessee people, like, harass us. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they they're the people in jail that you see walking around with their pockets inside out, holding on to the guy's pocket. I ain't gonna tell you what that really means, right? That's Auburn and Tennessee, man. Right, like like they like little gnats that just keep buzzing in your ears, and you keep swatting at it, right? So my only rebuttal to Auburn and Tennessee is. We don't care enough about you to even continuously talk about you. You hadn't won enough. We don't even care enough about, we'll address you, we'll address you to let you know we hear you, okay? But we don't even care enough about you to continuously bring your name up, right? You hadn't earned that right yet, man. So I don't give a damn what they say, but I wanted to tell the undefeated, it, 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 it's, it's, it's unbelievable, man. It really is, man. Tim Nolan, what's up, Tim? How you doing? And I think the number one thing about it, guys, is they see the differences in Alabama's recruiting. They see the differences in the um, in the practice, the practice habits. They see um, love Coach Saban to death, but Coach Saban had his way of doing things. And you know, even though it was it was it was um, it was a little outdated as of to what everybody's doing now. Coach Saban made it work, right? Coach Saban's style worked because of Coach Saban, right, Cynthia? So, but if you're really being honest about 2024, guys, it's not a lot of kids that are wired like that to take Coach Saban's type coaching today, right? I'm around these kids every day, man. These kids that's coming out of high school now, present day, they're just wired a little differently. They're they're a little, and I ain't trying to diss them, but I'll just say compared to the day I came out, they're a little, they're a little tender, just a little bit, right? And it's not their fault. It's not their fault because, you know, they don't go outside and play no more. They on, you know, they're on the phone. They have they give these computers to them that are phones now, and they can do anything and everything on the damn phone. I can order groceries. I can cut my sprinklers on. I can play games. I can talk to my partner and look at him while I'm talking to him. So they don't have to do anything but just have this little pocket hell computer that we call phones, right? So they're a little, they're a little, 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 little self-centered, just a little bit, right? What's up, Eric D? Shout out to Eric D up in the house, man. Shout out to Eric D. So they're a little different, and it's okay. It's okay. I do think they panic a lot, the, the ops that is. Train wreck, what's up with you, bro? I do think they see the practice energy at Alabama. 
I do think they see the media attention and the positive reinforcement that we're getting from the players. I do think they see the high school players all on the sideline and they get nervous when they see top kids, right? I do think they see the constant interest in Alabama nationwide still right now, if not even more as far as getting kids that Coach Saban may or may not have really looked at that much because he had a criteria. If you're not at least six, six, six foot, six one, six foot, we're not going to really recruit you at corner for real. I mean, in the history of Coach Saban being in Alabama, I think we had Javier Arenas, Cyrus Jones, and – Maybe Anthony Averett, who's 5'11", that's under six foot. Every other corn that's ever played here and started has all been over six foot to my recollection, right? So Coach Saban had his, what's up, Adam? Adam Lamparillo, what up with you, bro, bro? Um, Coach Saban had his way of doing things right, and it worked, right, for him. But I don't think another coach can come in and do what Coach Saban done the way he done it. Because Coach Saban's cachet, it was so big, kids listened to him. Everybody knew this guy's won everything. This guy will put me in the league. So even though his style was what was told to me by the kids was boring, right? They still came to Alabama because they trusted Coach Saban. They trusted the process, right? Coach DeBoer is a younger coach. He does things the way he do it, and kids like it. He is like music playing at the practice. Everybody does do every, that's been going on for years. We just didn't do it at Alabama. Kids like the fact that their position coaches can talk to the media. Kids like the fact that different kids, even freshmen, can talk to the media. Kids like the fact that 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 you know it's open access to practice until they just have the closed practices. You know, it's more, it's more um, how can I say it? What's the word they use nowadays? Clout. It's more clout for the university. Yeah, bring your cameras on in here, right? This is Coach DeBoer, right? We love Coach Saban. Let me, but let me show you how we doing it. Yeah, bring your cameras. Come on in. Come on in, right? That's how you keep Alabama relevant in the transition between Coach Saban leaving. That's how, right? You 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 allow that sneak peek in. You allow them to raise the hood on this thing and look under the hood for a minute and see Bama is still Bama. And I think that's what got the ops in the uproar right now. I think that's what got the ops in the uproar right now. If you guys can, please hit that like button on the way in, please. Um, so this video can get out and about. Run those numbers up if you guys can. We really appreciate you, man. Trevor Pernier, what's up with you, bro? Home team, man. How you doing, bro? I'm glad you're in the house, man um Ephraim says it's a distraction to coach um what what is Ephraim I'm sorry I might have missed what you were saying um you mean uh to coach Saban my bad Ephraim tell me what you were saying I'll read it um so yeah a lot of the kids nowadays right Nicole a lot of the kids nowadays oh to me oh you mean the music Ephraim what you mean I'm sorry I missed your call I missed your um what you were saying, Ephraim, my bad. Um, yeah, so so everything you see Coach DeBoer doing, right, is, is prevalent things that kids love. Do you guys not see the interest in Alabama right now, how high it is, right? It's almost amazing that kids like this are, 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 are like, bro, I can come to Bama now because Coach Saban, like I said, he had his ways, right? Al said it best. Al said it best right here. That's what I was saying. If you're out in front of the media realm, you can control the narrative. That is a hundred percent right. This is why. Uh, oh, okay, Ephraim, I got you. This is why Coach Saber. I mean, uh, excuse me, Coach DeBoer, Like, yeah, bring your cameras on in. Come on in for a minute. Sit down. Have a seat. Right. Make sure you get some good film. He wants you to see that this is what we do. It is working. As far as Ephraim saying the music is a distraction. I don't think so, Ephraim, respectfully. I don't think so because when you play ball and you know this, Ephraim, you can be distracted with or without music. You could be as quiet as you want to and still have your mind in la-la land, you know, with other things on your brain. That music get to keep the kids bouncing and keep the kids engaged and keep them going hard. I don't think it's a distraction to these younger kids nowadays because they so used to that, right? 
Oh, what you were saying, Ephraim, my bad. What you were saying? I, I missed it again, Ephraim. Please. Oh, you mean the people? Okay. Okay, you mean the people on the sideline? Yeah, now Coach Saban went with that. Now Coach Saban, you know, he, 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 and I understand because when you've been doing something one way, what's up, Buck? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm glad you're up in here, Buck, man. Glad you're up in here, broski. Roll tied to you. When you've been doing something for 50 plus years, right? I do understand you don't want to deviate from that. And it's worked. I get it. I'm, I'm right there with you, Ephraim. Right? But this coach is doing it more of a modern way. Right? And I really appreciate that because every kid, I can't tell you guys how many camps I've been to. Um, I'll tell you the, the specific one. I went to Atlanta, the VTO camp, Nike sponsored. And uh, all I heard from different kids, man, was at that time, Jalen Bakwe was still in high school. All I heard, shout to Jalen, shout to his father and mother and father too. All I heard was how they love Bama. Bama gonna put them where they wanna go, but the music Thunderstruck was boring to them. The way Coach Saban ran practice was boring to them. They didn't like it. I just, I'm telling you the truth, they did not like it. Um, now that wasn't gonna stop them from coming to Bama because we know the track record and the history of Bama. And that's what saved us a lot with a lot of kids, but we did lose a lot of kids to other schools because of some of these things this is the fact um cynthia my friend cynthia says coach son i think we're going to shock the naysayers this year and everybody but us is going to be crying that's a whole fact cynthia i couldn't have said it better myself these people are waiting for alabama to fall and the thing about it is alabama has done so well in recruiting that that's why they're panicking that's why they keep having something to say right so I personally love it. I personally am elated and love it. The fact that they so worried about Alabama, I really, really, really am. Wor I really am, am, am uh, happy about that. I'd stack that edge, Russia. Let me tell you guys something. And this is one reason why, Cynthia. This is one reason why. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'll say this, Adam. You do have kids that are lazy. You do have kids that are entitled. But I'll say this, Adam, it's our fault. When I say our, I'm talking about us as adults. We give them shows and tell them how great they are. Now, we got whole recruiting shows that come on National Signing Day, right? We give them entire shows, bro. We tell them that they're five stars and they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. We rank them and tell them they're the number one this, number one that. And you expect that to change when they go to college? No, if anything, that's going to make them want to beat their chest more to, to show the people around them. I'm, I'm good, too. I was the number one such and such and such. You know, it's our fault, man. We created this system to monetize off of it, right? These news stations, these um sports channels, these sports notifications, Rivals, 24-7, Scout.com, who's defunct right now. But all these people are getting paid off these these. these these, these recruiting classes and rankings and <clears throat> so of course of course right the key is you got to find that necessary cushion adam between showing them accountability and showing them that i love you enough to tell you the truth if you ball out it's kind of like what coach saban said they don't care what you know until they know that you care the, can you see what you follow me on that that's the difference in these kids nowadays they're just as talented but at the same time, they've been brought up through the social media era. Everything in their whole life is on this little thing right here. Everything. So that's not going to change just because they come to college, right? You got to find a way to, to minimize that and maximize their talent through the way that they know how to live. And that's on this. Every day, all day. Um. The thing about it is our edge rushers, guys, are going to be some of the best we've had at Bama because I do think these rooms are as deep as we've had at Alabama. Um, the standard at Alabama was printed on the walls, man. You understand what I'm saying? After accepting the job at Alabama um, as the outside linebackers coach last year, Christian Robinson was instantly aware of the talent and the expectations that come, in, that come with coaching in Tuscaloosa, right? Um, I can remember him saying the day one he walked in and there was these great players all over the walls. Some of them he knew through recruiting. Um, and he knew then 
he knew then you got you, you got a standard to uphold you can't slip you got a standard to uphold so when you look at dallas leaving and you look at quindarius robinson you look at all these guys like keanu coy you know all these great talented kids that may be called to play wolf um our edge rushers are in a great position you look at at at, at uh yonze pierre quay russo um who was noah carter coming in jay sean ross all these different guys that can bend that can lean that can do everything you need to get to the quarterback right um keanu court is 6'4 235 pounds man he runs a 4640 and can bend right look at quay russo this kid could start for most schools man yonze pierre is a true freshman and can bend these kids can come get the quarterback and in this defense they'll have an opportunity to, to do just that our edge our edge room is absolutely outstanding i think we have a lot of freaks in there um you know coach womack said it himself we got a lot of freaks on this team right um <clears throat> So I'm happy about it. Yonze Pierre, this kid come from Ufala, right here in the state. Same, he's the cousin of Courtney Upshaw, right? That's cousin Courtney Upshaw's cousin. Kid is 6'3 and a half, 228 pounds. Man, listen, you know, when Courtney Upshaw got to Alabama, he was 6'3, 230. He left at 6'3, 270, right? Played about five years in the NFL injured himself and, and and been coaching high school football ever since helping young people right might have played longer than that you know what i'm saying i know injuries kind of made him shut it down as most players do um shout out to courtney man you follow his best right there bro him jernigans i remember them boys in 2006 you know what i mean the boys was good man um yeah all facts all facts you know it is it's you know Eric D says, Coach Sean, part of what made Coach Saban so special is that he probably is the only coach that would pass on a five-star player and take three or four-star key. Yeah, yeah. If the five-star player did not fit what Alabama was doing, if his character did not fit, Coach Saban wouldn't take you. I know several he turned Coach Saban turned the blind eye to that we could have got. And later on down the road, people found out why. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, man. I mean. I coach kids, man. I did it for seven years, eight years total. I would never talk bad about these kids as far as them being this and being that because it's the society we live in, bro. It's not just the kid is soft. Some of these kids will beat your ass. You know what I'm saying? They're not soft at all. They're just coddled in a coddled society, right? As far as being individually soft, nah, these kids have an animal magnetism and will hurt you if you play with them. Don't ever think they soft it to that magnitude. But are they mentally a little weaker than how we all grew up? Yeah, they are because this society is. This is a society that is just soft altogether, right? Um, if you tell the truth about certain things, you may lose your job, <laughs> right? We just live in a different kind of society, guys. So, of course, the kids are going to be a, a, a byproduct of what we live in. Jared. Thank you for that ten dollar super chat, Jared. Jared says, "Remember um, one of your original points two months ago to all outsiders: laugh now, cry later. Now we are slowly getting deeper into the crying territory, territory, and we're just getting to start. We're just starting to get la starting laughing. Yeah, that's a fact, Jared. That's a whole fact. That's exactly what I was saying. Just be patient because you know, doing the stuff we do, you have inside people, you have people on staff, you have friends who coach, and they all tell you the same thing. I can tell you." Such and such want to come to Bama. Right now, they don't have room, but when such and such leaves, such and such coming. Such and such want to come to Alabama right now. Coach DeBoer is deciding whether he want to take them or not. And these are talented kids, man. Talented kids, right? Um. So, yeah, you're right, Jared. Thank you for that $10 super chat. Um, the kids are different. I will say that. They're different. But I'll say this, man. The society they growing up in is different, Right? um the society they're growing up in is very very different guys the, um i grew up in a society where your mama could take a switch and whip your ass if you did something crazy and you offended mama and and everybody would applaud her i grew up in a society where you know if you were doing something wrong 
right? I can remember it was an old church on our block. It was an old church and the windows was busted. We were throwing rocks through the windows. It was already busted. The neighbor would pull out a switch and whip your ass. Your mama, her and your mom and the neighbor were there slapping high five like, yeah, get him. You do that to nine days, man. First of all, you, the other parent gonna wanna jump on you and you might even go to jail, right? We live in a different society, guy. We cannot blame the kids for being a little tender when we live in a tender society, bro. We don't live in the 90s anymore where you can keep it real and do things that made us who we are, right? The kids nowadays are growing up in a society where everything they need is on this. Everything. I say again, I could cut my sprinklers on with this damn phone. I can order me some groceries with this damn phone. I can make a love connection with this phone call Smook and see Smook and we both can wave at each other. I can do anything I want to do on this damn phone, right? So they have no reason to be outside playing football like we did. I can play football on my phone. I can do a whole workout from my phone, right? So you got to, it's the society, guys. It's not the kids. The kids, you know, play with some of these kids. These kids will whip your ass. Play with them. They ain't soft like that. These kids will beat you to death, man. These kids are not soft like that. They're just softer as far as what we grew up in. The society is different, guys, right? The 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 things that we knew as stuff that all made all of us who we were, you can't do that nowadays, guys. Right? So these kids are growing up in this social media, you know, Gen Z, Gen K, H A L L P, whatever generation it is. You cannot blame them for being a product of what they're around 24 7 right that's a fact these kids ain't bro listen these kids ain't playing with you disrespect one of them <laughs> these kids you know and, and you say we grew up in a society where you see an old lady walking across the street and they're filming her instead of helping her with her groceries yes that's because this society has made it cool to do this to use this the society they grow up in that's the cool thing to do like in our day it was cool to be on vhs tape to be on cd right well nowadays it's cool to do something stupid that's the cool thing to do we don't understand it because we are like that was just dumb why would he do that but to them they, they that's great right i don't even try to understand it because it's just not my it's not my era to understand right it's just not my era. I'm around these kids. It's just not my era to understand. They tell me, coach, you'll never understand. You're right. I don't. So I don't try to judge them off of that because you'll be judging an entire society, right? It's not just the kids. Look at some of these parents, man. Look, look at the internet. It's full. It's filled with foolishness from old people, our ages, 35, 40 and up. Filled with foolishness, right? So... That's just how I see it, man. You know? Um, and finally, John ja Marin Lathan. I gotta give John ja Marin Lathan a big shout out. You know. Um, I think John ja Marin, I said this a few months ago. I think people like John ja Marin, Curtis Perry, these kids are gonna flourish in this defense. Um, in this 425, at least. I think it fits John ja Marin's kid about 6'3, 270, 275-ish, right? Um I think this 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 is what's going to really help him. Um, I can imagine he loves this new system. I can imagine he'll get a chance to kind of showcase his talent more of um, what he can do in this defense. Uh, he'll have more freedom to rush now. Um, you know, it'll give you some bit to really see what kind of athlete you are in this defense. Um, I read somewhere where he had got a 285 last season because of that type of defense. And now he's feeling comfortable moving back down to the 270s, you know, to keep his uh, agility and to keep his athleticism. Um, you know, some, his duties were limited in our defense last year because of what Coach Saban asked those guys to do, right? But I think this defense will give him the opportunity to really show what he can do. That hybrid type kid, kid that can uh, do a lot of different things from the defensive line. Um, so I'm really, really proud of John Moran Lathan. I'm proud that he stuck with Bama. I'm proud that he'll have the opportunity to come in and um, really showcase his talent in this type of defense. Um, he only had, a, what, a sack and a half, I think. A couple of quarterback hurries in 14 games last year. 
So I'm really, really excited to see that speed that he brings, that speed to power that he brings in this defense, along with Keenan, along with Tim Smith, along with the rest of those kids, um, you know, playing Bandit. I think that's probably what they'll have him when he do play, along with LT Overton maybe, Jordan Renard, Keon Keeley. So I'm really excited for him, and uh, I think it's going to pay off, man. Shout out to John Marie and Lathan. I think this is your year to show what you can do. And I think whether it's in a in a in a reserve role, starting role, I think Ja is gonna make some noise. Please believe it. Shout out to Ja Marie and Lathan, man. It's your time, bro. Undefeated. Wrap up what you guys talking about. See what you guys are saying. See what you guys are talking about, man. Uh Adam says we're going to make the playoff and be tough to beat. I hope so, Adam. I really hope so, man. Um, I hope so. Uh, Vanna Carter says, my 18-year-old niece told me not to say anything to anyone else's kids when she was in high school and kids were being disrespectful. They so serious. They were so serious, too. Just say facts. That's all facts. I mean, that 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 goes hand in hand with what I said. When I'm, I'm, I was at JC, man, um, you know, when, when Levi Randolph, was at Bob Jones and the next year I was at Bob Jones with Levi and I was with, you know, several kids who who um, had the opportunity to to play college ball. And I can tell you, AJ Harris father told me these it, it's just different. I mean, it's just different, man. I mean, do you blame the kid? It's kind of like NIL. Do you blame the kid or do you blame the society in which the kid is living in? The part that get under my skin is I played this game, bro, just like most of our coaches did. I would never understand blaming the kid in a society of adults that's just as vulturous, it's just as culture vulturous as the kids are. But no one holds the adults to accountability. We'll get mad at a kid when he transfers, right? But we won't get mad at the coach when he sit on your couch giving you the speech of how accountability means something, loyalty means something. The next job call him four months later, his ass is gone. He shot, he shot you the deuces. Deuces. Right? We don't we don't say nothing to the coach, though. We don't even bring that up. Right? These kids are growing up in an era to where we have made money the number one thing. And we don't hide it. For God's sakes, look at the college football playoff, man. You don't think the kids see that? What I tell you about these little things right here, these pocket-held computers, what I tell you. See, in my day, we didn't have these. We had them, but they didn't do all this stuff. I couldn't cut my damn sprinklers on from the phone. I couldn't order me groceries from the phone, right? I couldn't do a full-blown workout from my phone. I couldn't call Coach Smooth and Coach JM and, and talk to them and see them wave at me and we waving at each other. I couldn't do none of that on my tele on my on my we even call them telephones back then. I hadn't even heard that word in 15 years. These kids are growing up in a society where everything runs through this, every last facet of our lives. And guess who else do it? The adults. The adults. The hell you think the kids gonna do, man? Right? Come on, man. Like, 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 I'm not one of those guys that hold kids accountable and the adult do as I say, not as I do. That's the most ridiculous statement ever made. That might that may possibly be the most ridiculous, asinine statement ever made. They're gonna do what you they see you doing. Right? USC is in the big 10. Guess why? Money. TV contracts. You don't think all these kids see that? You don't think all these kids, you don't think they see that? You don't think all these children see everything about college football today that, that y'all have deemed important is all money. Coach Saban told you this. The bowl games don't mean nothing no more. You, 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 you've, you've taken that away. Kids ain't trying to play in the bowl games. What the hell am I going to play in the bowl game for? I want to play in the college football playoff. If I can't play in the college football playoff and get the big check, then I'll just go sit out and bite my nails while my teammates go play. You created that. Y'all created that. Coach Saban told you this four years ago. All you talk about from day one is the college football playoff. What's up, JM? What's up, Coach Mook? All what's up, you man? Talk about, Yo. And these guys will tell you, from day one, what's being promoted? You have the little trophy and turn it around. The college football playoff, that's all they talk about. They don't talk about bowl games. They don't talk about the Rose Bowl no more. They don't talk about the Sugar Bowl no more. They talk about the college football playoff with the little, the little segment and the little music and the. That's what you playing. So what you Dr. think these Pepper kids? Pepper commercials. Pepper <laughs> commercials. 
What y'all, do y'all think the kids see? Them. Gross. Jay Young, what do y'all think? Tell them, what do they think the kids see? Oh, y'all yeah. Have I mean, college football important and everything else less important. Mm-hmm. I'll right tell on. you, man. Like, well, like the job I did, and I won't go into detail on it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. But, but what I did before this, I dealt with a lot of that. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot. Um, and I'll tell you, man, very interesting <clears throat> the impact of what goes on um, as far as how it how it impacts the kids, right? Um, yeah. And what they're observing and recognizing. I mean, there's there's so many topics that we could go so in depth on. And I think that's why you have to give a round of applause to the coaches who are doing it right and from the parents who are doing the best they can in situations right. now, now not everyone's situation, right. Is, um, it, it, it works out in a sense of that, that someone's just like leaving or doing something wrong. Okay. But sometimes I'll tell you what, with these kids today <clears throat> and due to what we've kind of put out there, <clears throat> excuse me with my voice too, by the way, I think I'm losing a little bit, but, um, what they're seeing and observing, you know, is what they think is real. Okay. And, and it's not real. That's the problem. Right. Like all a show. And so they go to high school or they go to middle school and they pretend that this is, this is real. The thing that we do run into though, what is real for a lot of the players coming out of high school now is that you get this, you, you get a very firsthand grab of, of maybe money early, or you think that you get money early. That's not going to be the case for every single player, right? Until they change some things, do things differently. And since we present a, a culture of just pure, like it, in a weird way, I say it. I say it a lot, but we got to get away from the mindset of greed. Yeah. Like, sadly, greed is is dictating so many things right now within this, within our society. Thank you for putting that banner down. <laughs> I try to sit up real straight, but um, it's dictating so many things in our society. You know that that it's it's sadly it's impacting like things that that have fundamental. I guess touches to uh, the way our, our youth grow up, and, and football is one of those things. That's why I really don't want to see it disappear, right? Hey, From the standpoint of of that stuff. Facts. You know. So as we welcome Coach Jay in, Coach Sean killing it, Coach Jake, we all pulling in. We're doing something different this week. This is why we we kind of switched up the lineup. I, I'm going to be leading off this week, uh, so we can kind of integrate transitions. We want to kind of. Make this network the network. You get what I'm saying? Still with our vibe, mm-hmm. still with our, our family vibe, but we want to make this the network. So to transition, before Coach Sean leaves, before Coach Jake and Coach Jay take over, I'm going to start a poll, and I have a question that I want to present to the panel, and we're going to take the first 10 minutes to kind of discuss it. And this hasn't been discussed. This hasn't. This wasn't given to them. And we starting this off with an easy topic, kind of something that we can expound on for 10 minutes. And I think this is going to give us a different vibe with what we have to work with with this channel being that coming up on the summertime i know after spring it's going to be hard you know create narratives and things of that nature but we do have opportunity to create some awesome discussions and so one thing that before we get into uh into you know off season we got spring ball right and so the question i'm gonna pose to the chat and also to the panel is what side are we most excited about meaning which side of the ball are we most excited about you only got two options offense and defense all right, yeah. and I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like this. Any mini money mo stop, and I'm gonna stop at Coach Jake Merrill, and I want you to feel. I want you to let us know. Give us like a minute, a straight okay. minute of straight up, and you got the timer at the top. So when you start, that's when your minute start. Give us a, a straight minute of why you're excited. Go in depth, personnel, boom, 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 boom. In three, two, one, go. Boom. I think that in, in the end, for me, what it comes down to is the defense, right? Like, I'm most excited to watch the defense this year. I think that's probably going to be the biggest question mark just due to the fact that Saban is now gone. He was the, he was your mastermind of that defense. He was, I mean, he's your head coach. He, his defense and the defense was the foundation, right, of Alabama football and the way it was observed for the last, you know, 17 years. Um, so, That is probably for me the most important part. What I am excited about and excited to see is the youth on the defense portrayed and really shine in this new version of what we could consider 
what Nick Saban was running previously, but with this 425 Swarm D. I mean, you look at our secondary, they're studs, they're phenomenal. They're young, but I think with the way they're tested in practice, they're going to be really, really good. I think the same thing goes for our linebackers and our D line. I'm ready. Facts, 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 facts. I like it. Hey, Coach J, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. My father said the channel like you ain't never been here before. Welcome to the co to the show, Coach J. Who are you most excited about and why? Go ahead and take it away, bro. I'm most excited about uh, Jalen Murrow. I'm most excited about the offense um, because that's the side of the ball that actually needs to improve. This defense, like I, like I talked about countless of times, this defense could be mid for all we know. And yet, it can still go ahead and still win a national championship. That, it still is that possibility. This is the area that we're kind of getting into. I know the last two champions have been led by elite defenses, but I think if you if you look at the the, the amount of roster turnover that's kind of happened with this team, uh, I, I think at least from my personal opinion, my expectations have kind of lowered a little bit, only because the, it is going to be a brand. You know, it's going to be fresh. It's going to be you know, it's going to be filled with a lot of different talent that will have their growing pains because at the last because at the last defenses which honestly has had more experience more nfl draft uh, more nfl draft you know per capita uh during those last three years if they had their struggles then i think that this defense will have their struggles especially brandon with new things so i think when you take a look at the offense side of the ball that has to be the one that has to get better that has to be the side that has to carry and if if we have our our heisman our, our heisman -like quarterback in jalen murrow and we have the offensive line with the interior offensive line that has been able, that it's been able to produce the amount of talent with some of the best offensive minds in the game that took that took a team and took an offensive personnel that's way weaker than the, that's way weaker than this Bama team. If that was able to succeed and go to a national championship, then we should be able to do the same thing as well. Facts, bro. I love it. Y'all liking this feel right now? I love it. I love it. Yeah, y'all feeling this? I'm feeling this. Yeah, like, cool, this, man. I like this it. Feels, this feels good, Coach Sean. Which side are you excited about? I know you're an offensive guy. I know, you know, we got a lot of different things happening on defense. Which side are you excited about? And tell us why. Before I do that, let me get this last super chat. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know he's going to be on me. Road Warrior, thank you for the $5 super chat. Road, road yeah, Tide Sean, been keeping it with me. Rose training in the spring. So excited to see the SEC this year starting the mid-row. Road Warrior, we all thank you for that $5 super chat. And we agree with you 100%. For me, it's the offense. I'm just like Coach Dane. I don't have any worries about our defense because of Malachi Moore, because of Deontay Lawson, because of Jahai Campbell. Uh, for me, it's the offense, man. It's the offense because of the offensive line, because of the continuity of the offensive line, because of the different offensive scheme that we're running, and because of how we lost to Michigan. Um, the way we lost to Texas, the way we lost to Michigan, and the way we played against Georgia, even though we won that game, it left a bad taste in my mouth offensively. I need to see the quarterback play get better. Uh, I need. I, I'm, we have an ample um, offensive-minded coach now that'll put Jalen in real, real good situations. I want to see the offense because that Michigan game really, really, really is the lasting memory I have of our offense. I, I know Coach DeBoer runs a type of offense that we can really, really, really score some points and get better. Um, and I really believe the offense side of the ball need the most help. I think our defense will be ahead of the offense. Uh, naturally as that's nothing abnormal but for me the offensive side of the ball is the one that i picked that i need to see better from and i think we will okay hey so if i had to give my take man i'm gonna be on the offensive side too not to leave you by yourself jake i know you're a defensive guy being a safety you know doing your I'm thing good, man listen i like the island <laughs> hey listen so <laughs> the reason why coach smook is excited about the offense is one i'm an offensive player but it's that's the side of the ball to me just like coach jay and coach sean said that's the side of the ball that we saw so many inconsistencies over the past three or four years just inconsistent even with the defense struggling at times we saw more consistency with how that they would play we knew what to expect from our defense year in and year out whether they started off strong and they were shaky they were shaky the whole year this this past season awesome defense this year uh coming into it new offensive schematics I think Jalen Monroe is going to be a key as far as the success of this deep, uh, this offensive uh, game plan. The front, I think there there won't be a problem finding the perfect match. I mean, so much talent, so much young talent that needs to be developed and put in the game situations, but talent at that position. And with the play calling, Nick Sheridan, uh, Coach Kalen DeBoer, their minds together, the pass game coordination of Jamarcus Shepard, the run game coordination and schematics of uh, Coach Chris Cap, who is – very highly regarded in that sense and his development of offensive line i think he's just poised for one a heisman sees from Jalen miro um two 
uh, two 800 plus yards receivers, but we will have multiple receivers with 400 plus 500 yards. in as far as the end of season stats, and I think this offense will be the catalyst for this team this year. Defense is going to be solid, but I think this offense is really going to turn some heads with the averages we're going to be putting up. And I'm looking at a season of averaging maybe 41 to 44 points a game, especially the way that look you look at how the schedule lines up early. So I'm excited about what this offense is going to do. A lot of talent at the wide receiver position, deep at running back. You got your quarterback figuring out two spots on the offensive line. I think we're poised for a, a great season. And if I if I had to add on a little a little end point for everybody, uh, record predictions and just I don't we ain't got to get in depth. Just off the top of the head, how you feel right now, Coach Jake, Jake Merrill, what you what you feeling right now for them regular season? Oh, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm saying they're going 12 and 0. Okay, like I'm saying undefeated, 100. percent Coach Jance, Coach Jance, uh, 10 and 2, 10 and 2, Coach Sean. That was my thunder too, 10 and 2. Yeah, I, I said 11 and 1. I said 11 and 1 only because I feel like one of those road games will catch us, and that's not a bad thing. That is not a bad thing. I wish I wish we had a, a opponent earlier in the season to give us that one loss early so we could get on out of the way. But um, one of those road games at Tennessee or LSU, I feel like we won. I, and I, maybe if we get past all of those, I think Oklahoma might catch us late too, you know. That's uh, but I only see one real one. I, I can't see the second one. I don't see this team dropping two games this year. This team. Like maybe last year with this staff, last year's team. But this year's team, just too much fire, man. Too much firepower. So with that being said, y'all, that's it for my part of this segment. I only came on to transition us. Coach Son, enjoy just segment. Coach Jake, Coach Jake and Jay Jance, appreciate y'all for bringing it on. Y'all going to be on this segment by yourself. I'm going to run this commercial. And after commercial, y'all get J&J &J to end the night. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Much That's love, man. Roll Tide, man. All right. All right, Coach Moot. Um, All right. Big shouts out to the undefeated, man. You guys always tap in with me. I appreciate that. Um, love when you on here, man, with me. I thank you. Shout out to Coach Moot. Shout out to Coach J. Shout out to Coach J.M. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the brother Ty Hayes. Shout out to Kyle and Lady T. Um, I'm very appreciative of all you, man. Thank you, Cynthia. You already know Cynthia Middleton. Um, roll tie to you, man, and we'll tap back in with you guys tomorrow, God willing, man. I appreciate y'all. Right. Oh, all right, Coach, I need you to run the ad, man. I got to get some oil so I can start rubbing it on my skin. <laughs> it I got to get a pair, man. Listen, you threw that segment in my face. I wasn't I wasn't ready. My eyes are all watery. I feel yeah. like, I feel like, a, I feel like <laughs> man, I feel like a six-year-old chick, man. That's, that's, you rushed me to the prom. I gotta get ready. I gotta get dressed up, man. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't let me get to the to the to the, to the beauty salon. Like you, you, I, you didn't get me ready. We gotta keep it close, man. We gotta stay. We gotta stay locked in. But here goes the commercial, man. Y'all take it away, man. Much love. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code lpr for special bamo football pricing up to 20 percent off also go to the rogue shop.com use the promo code bamo you get legal cbd for me personally i like the topical oil you know how intense my workouts are right so i like the topical oil i like to rub that on my back whatever after those cinder blocks so go to their website cruise down look through their website and uh, definitely check out rogue shop.com and like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Wow. Dang, man. You got man, that stuff ready? Oh. Jay, you gotta let me know that angle, man. <laughs> oh, dude, that was good. Man, dude. 
they caught you right in the middle of it too, man. Oh, like, on, man. Dang, I got, I got son. Vision, man. If you want to get some of that oil, man, get some oil. Get some oil on yourself, man. Y'all got Y'all have to stop, man. Y'all got Y'all have to let me start. Y'all gotta let me know. Come on now, I know we're family. Dang, dude, I looked. Uh, I, I, I was a little worried there. I was a little worried there for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, honestly, that's good stuff. I mean, you rub it on your back. Make sure you say back at the end. Make sure you say back at the end. Okay. Do not just say the right. Don't just cut it short. Put it that way. All right. Don't don't do what I did the other night. All right. Um, I like it, man. Uh, oh, there you go. Thanks, Smook. I appreciate you, man. I know you're in the back and and putting that view, changing that view for us. You were awfully close up to that screen. But Jay, how you doing, man? How's the night going? Man, I'm, 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 man, I started off pretty crap, uh, because for some mm -hmm. reason it was snowing for like the last week and all of a sudden you wake up today, oh, yeah. you, you step outside and it's 70 degrees outside. It's just, it mm -hmm. is what it is, man. I mean, we just have, I mean, I, I, I'm literally sick. I'm very, very sick. Uh, my nose has been running all freaking day. This weather is legit killing me. It's, it's killing me. So, um, I, you know, but, but besides that, man, this, you know, watch Doom 2, watch Doom Part 2. I, oh. I've never Never watched a Doom part a movie in my life. Decided to go see it. Um, not okay. bad, All right? Watched the first part on stream, and then I just I, I just went out and just said, you know, I'm gonna watch part two. Um, met some uh, met met some people. Met, met met some people that actually watched the channel. Um, shout oh, out to cool. boy yep, shout out to boy Marcus. He's a he he actually goes you know kind of stopped me by man. He said, what's going on, Coach Jay? Marcus, we watched the shout out to you. Um, wow. So yeah, yep. So that that was a great experience. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, and then yeah. Besides that, man, like everything started to kind of blow up a little bit, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, people are just taking L's left and right, man. Auburn's still, you know, they're still kind of going off on Twitter because you know they're still blaming mm -hmm. us, Alabama, for the most part. We're headed to the Sweet Sixteen while they're crying over there about how they want to throw up their SEC championship, right? You saw what's going on with P Diddy. I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but you got Auburn oh, man. fans comparing us to yeah, yeah. I don't know if you see it on Twitter, man. We're, we're getting compared to P Diddy. I'm like, what's going on? Like, what, why are we getting compared to P Diddy? What's going on? I just, I had to look it up for myself. I'm like, what's going on here? But it is what it is, man. Everything else has been kind of been dandy, man. I'm just got to, you know, kind of get ready to chat, man. I'm just, get, I'm just getting ready to go and see what's going on with this chat. But yeah, man, coach, bro, how's, how's, how's it going on with you, man? Uh, it's, it's been all right, man. It's been, uh, been an evening. It's been, uh, it's been okay. Yeah. I heard that. I heard the north was getting a bunch of snow northeast or whatnot right. i heard it was dumping up there man like that's wild so crazy when you're in different parts of the nation and like one part it's pouring down rain typically that's washington the other part it's you know 85 degrees and sunny the other part it's dumping snow very interesting always always but um but other than that's been good man i think it's uh also was an interesting weekend as far as how football goes and you know and uh I think you, you get to hear the comments by the coaches, which you talked about. Me and Ty talked about earlier. That was that was interesting. Um, you you saw obviously USC pull in a hall of recruits uh, over the weekend. That was another interesting thing. Uh, Miami got yeah, one too. Where did that, where did that got one. From? Where did that come from? On the same uh, day. Yeah, man. It, it's a very interesting concept, right? With all that stuff, but uh, I don't know if you heard uh, me and. Um, me and Ty talking about this, but with uh, USC, with the coach, right, who they hired uh, with Errol Donald's D-line uh, coach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it is. It's all that. And, and, you know, just through the season, we're just going to get so much movement and recruiting. It won't even be funny. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's just there's a lot. And then I've been trying to really keep an eye on the transfer portal, too. You know what I'm saying? Like the transfer portal is an interesting one. It's going to, everyone keeps hinting at this. Supposedly like Josh Pate hinted at this too on the late night, late night, you know, show that he does. Um, he was talking about like, there's going to be some epic news. Like, and supposedly maybe Alabama's way sounds like possibly. Oh, I want to know, it. man, I want to know what that's going to, that news is going to be like, and it, a lot of people are saying the same thing. Like the transfer portal is just, it's going to shake the world for this this small section what 15 days is it like two weeks basically i think it is open for two weeks so uh that's good i'm i it, it's going to be interesting for sure you know what i mean like that is for sure so we'll see i mean it's it but like i said it's been an interesting low-key evening low-key evening you know and the fact that we get an end i thought we were starting the show and then we did some change of pace scheduling out. So that was cool. That was a, that was a good time. Um, 
I like it. So in chat, how you guys doing tonight? I see everybody in here. Marquita, I see you. Cynthia, Matt Farms, Sunson, Sunson, Sun, Sun, oh, Sun, Sun. Say that fast. Say that fast. Sunson. Uh, Adam, what's up, man? How you doing? Rich B. Kimberly, how are you? How are you? I know I saw Jared in here. Anthony Harris, what's going on, my dog? DR334, what up, dude? Jeremy Sanders, grade A music. Patriot Life, what's going on? Ephraim, how are you? How are you? Uh, who else do we got in here? We got Todd, Vanna, I see you in here. Vanna, how you doing tonight? Cynthia, I see you in here. Let's see here. I know there's a few others that I popped in. Jermaine, what's up, my friend? Trainwreck, I saw you in here what's up <clears throat> um and there's a, a and i know i saw moon rock in here too moon rock is in here brian's in here russell what's going on uh sean what's up man i know we got a lot of monica what's up i know there's a lot of a lot of people in here so we like to give a quick shout out to everybody as we roll through the evening and and say hi and i try to catch the ones i didn't get uh, as we roll through uh auntie janet what's up what's up uh steve what's up man good to see you in here i love it uh john m yo yo buck what's up uh a lot of people i love it i love seeing everybody in here moon rock i did see your uh comment about um the merrill island the spinoff show yeah we could definitely do that It'd be fun casey jones yo what up what up um so it's always it's always fun to to see what you guys have to say through the evening man i'll tell you what i i love some of your guys comments deborah what's up what's up deborah um it's a lot of fun this is probably the, one of my favorite parts of the evening you know what i'm saying so is where we just get to kind of shout out talk to you guys and, and jump back and forth you know <laughs> so um coach jay what do you got for us this evening my man what are we rolling with tonight what, what topics are we jumping into well first of all well first of all man i would just like to say this because someone someone's actually uh i don't know we got a bunch of unanimous people man they told me to put the hood up so the hood is back on. Um, oh, okay. They, wow. actually, All right. they actually they actually kind of like the late night segment. They want to. They're calling me Hooded Jay. So I oh. guess I'm. I guess for for nighttime purposes, I'm now referred as Hooded Jay. I, I I guess I'm Bruce Wayne. Apparently, I'm just you know for the most part coming out at the yeah. early time, all relaxed, okay. all pushed out, and then we get to nighttime, man. I just turn right to Batman, just a straight goon. So I guess I'm just I'm I, I guess I'm just Hooded Jay. Apparently, uh, I I just told Smoot that we that yeah. it's my soundtrack and just texted him i don't know if he's gonna do that but yeah definitely kind of watch out for that uh but yeah coach i think we can if, if you want i think we can kind of recap i don't know if you did this earlier but we can if you want to i guess we can try to recap this class um yeah. because we got luke metz luke metz was something for those who mm -hmm. don't know he, you know he came on around this time yep uh he came around this time for for you know with coach move talked about how much he enjoyed the process talked about the coaching staff and yeah, I mean, I think a lot of like a lot of we actually got the feeling he was going to do it, like just based off of his energy, yeah. um, he yeah. was going to fit here, right? I, I had a bunch mm -hmm. of people on, on on X that were saying, "Dude, we we know." Like a lot of people, were like, "Ah, oh, he's going here, he's going the." I'm like, no, no, like we we knew he was coming here just based off that feel, based off that energy, and um, yeah, I mean, kind of like, what did you kind of think about that? And just overall, what you've seen so far from this class. Oh, I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, man, I absolutely love, love, love this class um, so far. I think we, it, what's cool is we do have a lot of uh, linebacker potential. We have some DB, uh, potential DB you look at. For me, I think from a DB standpoint, I really look at Zamir Smith. Uh, he could play wide receiver as well, though. He's a stud. Um, you, I mean, you look at uh, Anthony Turbo Rogers, uh, just another really – phenomenal running back who i like and these guys have been really solid on their on their commitment right like that's what i love and same with miles johnson so i give them a lot of uh, applause they're, they're studs miles another one a right uh linebacker right um you know he he's he had to go through his rehab after an injury uh antonio coleman everyone is really high on coleman i'm high on coleman i like him i think he brings a really good presence it'll be interesting to see what position if he ends up coming into like I, in this type of defense, I, I feel him at that nose tackle. That feels good to me watching him. Um, Derek Smith, uh, extremely explosive, um, you know, number eight athlete in this class. Uh, he's also on a two, four, seven. I think they have him labeled as a wide receiver. I like him a wide receiver. I mean, you watch that guy. He's very, very explosive. 
And then you get into some of the, the more recent, uh, I guess the three most recent commits. Uh, and that would be your dudes, Daryl Duke Johnson, probably one of, I, I think he'll probably be one of the class favorites to tell you the truth, just because mm -hmm. of how long he's been a Bama fan. I mean, this kid is literally a lifelong Alabama fan. He, he literally announced his decision when he was eight years old. Okay. If you guys didn't see the video, it was one of the coolest videos. And I, honestly, I, I talked about it a couple of, um, couple of, of shows back. And when I talked about it, it like made me emotional, like thinking about that, man, like that, that, that is one of the coolest stories I have seen. And I love who the kid is as a person. Um, and, and honestly, he's a stud. That's probably going to be, I, I see him at sting. He, he, he's just, he's, he is really well developed. It's, it'd be hard to say he's going to play like a Husky. He could do it though, but I see him more as like a sting, maybe even a potential, potential wolf, but most likely sting. And then I look at, uh, then we look at Abdul, uh, Sanders jr. Absolute stud out of modern day. I mean, everyone talks about his his skill set, his ability. The guy is focused. He's he is a he's a serious dude, ready to come do work. Uh, wants to play at the best with the best. I mean, he he straight up just his commitment is based on the fact that he can come in here and and beast out. Right? He he, he looks like your typical Mike backer, but his coverage skills are phenomenal. Okay. Um, I will say that. Then we look at, you know, our most recent commit and that Luke Metz and, and Luke is one of those guys who, again, he, he'd probably be labeled as a fan favorite for this class early on. Um, just from the standpoint that his energy level, right. He's just one of those guys who you, you want to hang out with cause he's going to have, he's going to be off the, off the wall, having a good time. Right. <laughs> always, always upbeat, always excited. And, and then you watch his gameplay and you see that in his gameplay, but yeah, he's also very disciplined with his, you know, his ability to react to the play, uh, flow through, through the, uh, <clears throat> flow through the traffic, get to the ball carrier, make a solid hit. The guy, the guy's very explosive when he hits, right. He's very, very strong and athletic. Um, he's diverse. And I think that's one thing you can say about each one of these guys is all of them have uh, a lot of versatility. I love that. They have a lot of athleticism where they could play multiple positions and, and be very good. Um, but with Luke, I think what it's hard to pinpoint like exactly where he'll he'll play. Does he play a Sting? Does he play a Mike? Um, it's difficult, right? Uh, from that standpoint, we'll see how he continues to grow and develop as time goes on. But really, really like Luke. Super happy for him. Uh, and honestly, every single one of these guys in the class, you know, like uh, every single one of them. Um, it, they are every one of them makes it, I'm excited for, and I'm excited to see how this class comes together. It's interesting because, you know, I looked back at Saban's classes. Okay. While in between, because we, we just had so many people talking about it from earlier episode or earlier show with me and Ty. And uh, we talked that a lot of people are just comparing like, Hey, if we don't have five stars, or if we don't have this, right. Um, I don't see that being the case at all. Uh, I don't, uh, to be honest with you, you look at the 2007 class, which would probably be the one of the most difficult classes for saving, right? And that class uh, came in at number 12 and it didn't have a lot of dudes. You're sitting there saying, oh, this guy and this guy and this guy, you know, it wasn't like just this crazy off the charts class like he's had before. But I do think they were very, very good. And they talk about that class being this foundational class. Right. And so this does this be is this end up being the case for this class with DeBoer, such as that class was with Saban. Right. What's what do you think, Jay? No, I mean, I was I will say this. If we're comparing Nick Saban's uh, first year uh, to, to mm -hmm. compared to this, it's not even a discussion, man. I mean, Nick Saban, for the most mm -hmm. part, again, he, that that class that he had in back in the day was and that was actually a good class like that class, you know, was. You know that class brought in two net, like brought in a, you know, brought in a national championship, brought its first national championship. Oh, but yeah. this class is, it's, I think these kids are way more athletic compared to what it was back then. Um, I think for the most part, we were able to kind of, I think for this class, we were able to really identify, it's not just about the biggest particular prospect or stuff like that. I think it, it really identifies the true, not just the, not just the weaknesses, but the true strengths of what this team is. 
like you look at the linebackers from like a Luke Metz and a Johnson, like these guys are like these guys are very specific as far as their body type, um, the type of role that they've kind of play in, and just based off of their film. Even the kid Sanders from modern day, like these are two. Oh, yeah. Like I, Luke Metz is the biggest one. I think he's what what two twenty. Uh, you know Johnson's uh, two hundred. Um, Sanders is two. I think two hundred five. Is he? I I'm, I mm, I don't know. Let me let me take a peek at that real quick. Just from the standpoint, I, I do honestly want to see who was the biggest one. I think it is. It's the Sanders. It might be. It might be Miles Johnson. But I think overall, you're right. I think the. I think. Oh, yeah, Ian, Luke, yeah. yeah so but it's, but from it's, a it's, height and size wise, I think Luke is the biggest. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It, 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 you take a look at these classes. The biggest linebacker by far would be like two twenty. What two thirty? Two two forty. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these guys, I don't even know if they would even be labeled as linebackers. They'll probably switch to play as an out, as an outside guy, um, mm -hmm. compare or playing as a boundary or boundary or safety. I, I just, I just, I, I just don't think that they would even be, um, or at least if they come here, they would get bulked up a lot. And so, oh yeah, you know, I, I think that we've we've had specific types that we really wanted to kind of envision. Even like I always kind of look back at the uh, the South Alabama linebacker that we try to get. That mm -hmm. really fit the, what, what what Womack wanted to do a little bit early. Yeah, yeah. And I think that just gives me just great praise of we're not just again we're not just recruiting a lot of just random players. We're not just trying to get the stars, um, mm -hmm. or to try to fill up the roster and try to get better talent to compete. We're trying to get players that are very very specific in the roles that they have. Right, trying to give these players a much easier transition compared to compared to like say getting a guy that primarily plays let's say in, in a four three. Their defense primarily runs even fronts. And then all of a sudden you're putting them into a defensive scheme, which runs a lot of bot man, right? More of a three, four sort of type scheme. They run, yeah. they run a lot of nickel. Like it's, it could be a, a very hard transition for a lot of high school kids going out, you know, because of the deep, they're not familiar with the defense, but a lot of these guys are, they do have some sort of familiarity. And I think that's a big reason why they're able to kind of choose the schools that they did. And I think that's a pitch of what these coaches are now trying to put in with these high school recruits. Um, mm. Of course, a lot of other reasons too of why they, you know, of, of their pitches. Um, yeah. But I just, I just like the way this class is going right now. That we, it just seems like we have a plan in terms of what sort of player we really want to try to get for this program, not just yeah. getting the stars. And we've seen, and we've seen programs literally throw. It doesn't matter what position they played because they were a five star or a high rated four star. We've seen, we we've, we've seen schools literally throw money at a kid because of the because of the, the five star brand name that comes with it and it seems like we're not doing that we're attacking specific needs um i wouldn't even say our weak points right i our linebacking core i would say right now is a strength but because of the transfer portal and what's going on you just don't want to you just don't you just never know and mm -hmm. look at the board you target who do you like who do you really really truly like on that board and you go after it and if you can land them great if you don't then you focus on the next plan but I just love the I just love that we're starting to kind of transition to a specific type of player that we want to get, not just because of the value of of, of where that star is on that on that player's name. Yeah, no, you spot on with that. In the end of the day, you, we like if you're smart, obviously, and and these coaches are. Nobody is 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 recruiting guys based on their stars. If they are, they probably shouldn't be a head coach at a division one power five school that's just that's not the right way to go about it um the stars in the end don't mean shit let me just be honest <laughs> like the truth is is when you step on the field nobody cares what your ranking is i will tell you that right now um shoot man i can tell you a story i remember going again up against the number one rated outside linebacker when i was like a sophomore in high school at a football camp uh school's camp uh he was he was playing for i think it was bishop corman um and uh and he was a stud five-star beast uh, a lot of guys you know he's top ranked outside linebacker ended up playing at oklahoma for a long time um and i was a nobody at that time for i mean yeah i had gotten recruited and whatnot but not to the level of this guy and i'll tell you man like you go out there i kicked that dude's ass all day and and i was a sophomore in high school man like stars don't mean shit when you step on the field it's all about your mindset, your ability to understand this ball game, and then how quickly you can transition when when things are wrong, right? Or when things are different. Um, when you step on the field, you just play ball, right? 
So hopefully, and you can see, obviously, that's what we're going after in the end of the day. We're going after ball players and guys who know how to play this game. They play it the right way. And they have the skill set to be extremely, extremely um, versatile, but also they, they fit into the schemes of what we have. Okay. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be exciting. The recruiting classes, I mean, we got a long time until everyone signs. So, um, to drop in because it's about to go wild. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? It's like normally, like around this time, this is supposed to be like the, uh, the slow month. This is, oh, hope we got a super chat. Yeah. Sunsan, Sunsan, what's up? There it is. My like theory says, can we get your top or your top early or top teams head into next season? Where do you rank Bama? Um, Mm -hmm. I guess we can go with that real quick. Um, so top teams. You see what I'm talking about, man? I hate when y'all do this, man. Y'all just throw it up, just throw it right in my face, man. I'm not prepared. I'm not, you know, you can't just I like it. I, 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 I mean, coach, see, coach, see, he's used to that. He's used to that. Yeah. You can't just yeah. rush the the heist, the, the the chick, but I'm trying to get ready for prom. Right? You can't yeah, just rush hey, you can't just ask me right for prom day. You gotta get me ready. Yeah, I yeah, I like day. it. I gotta get my stuff going. No, um, mm -hmm. No, um, if I didn't like name top teams for college football right now, I think number one, I think number mm. one would probably be Georgia, only because I think yeah. I love, you know, only because they were able to retain, right? They were they were, they were mm. able to kind of retain a lot of their coaching staff. Um, they did mm. lose some players, but they also yeah. I think gained a lot of players, which kind of offsets that a little bit. Um, I think mm. they have probably one of the more experienced rosters in the country. So I think I love their combination. I think their schedule also goes for them. They play Bama and Texas. We understand that, but. Um, I think Georgia's good enough to win a national championship. Number two would probably be Ohio State. Um, mm -hmm. They got a great roster. They got a great roster. A lot of returning starters back. They just added Quinshawn Jenkins. Now you compare that with with uh, Anderson. Uh, the only weak spot that they did was that they that they got Seth McLaughlin in there, and he actually might play guard. I don't think he's going to play center. They actually, I think there's there's rumor that they're going to move him to guard. Um, yeah. So that would be interesting to just kind of <clears throat> see what, what kind of happens there. Mm -hmm. Their defense is going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, their defense is going to be really freaking good. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see who replaces Tommy Eichenberg. I know that's kind of one of their heart and soul, but their secondary is going to be good, man. That secondary is going to be good. You return JT mm -hmm. to the all out. Jack Sawyer is going to be back there, and they got a lot of depth at in the interior defensive line. So Michigan, uh, so what's up? So Ohio State would probably be number two. Uh, number three, I'll I put Texas. I put Texas at number three. I'm going to give them their due. Um, mm -hmm. As long as you got Steve Sarkeesian, an offensive-minded genius back there, they're not, they, I don't think they're going to go anywhere anytime soon. The defense has kind of been the heart and soul of their identity. It'll be interesting to see who replace. I mean, Murphy, uh, Murphy, uh, and Tavondre Sweat. They got a, they got a couple guys that played. Uh, they got a couple guys that played in that Bama game. They actually did a really really good job. Watch out, you know, watch out for Squirrel, uh, Squirrel White. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really good. It's going to be a stud. Um, off again. That's the team that. It, Probably will fall off a little bit, but they're still mm -hmm. going to be there. Their recruiting class is really, really good. They again by getting Trey Moore there, that's going to be really, really amazing for them. Um, so Texas is going to be a very, very good football team. Their talent is, is up there. Number four, I'll put us in that discussion. I'll put us. I'll put us at number four for now. Um, okay. Only be, and again, it's projection. I love what this. I think this offense is going to be elite, and I think it has to be. I think this offense yeah. has to be in that discussion. I think. Me and, me and Coach Merrill, we talked about it a lot, you know, some of the intricacies of what this offense is going to bring to the table. And I think we're going to continue to improve. I think we're going to continue to improve there. Number five, I would say, is Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stop at six. I, I'm just throwing on names. But number five, I'll say, would, would, would probably be Oregon. I think Oregon will probably be the third best team in the Big Ten Conference right next to Michigan, Ohio State. I think they're going to make a big jump. Um, mm -hmm. I love the addition of Evan Stewart because now you can kind of, you know, you pair that with Tez. Uh, you added Dylan Gabriel, who's one of the more established quarterbacks in the, in the yeah. country. Um, their offensive line is going to take a step back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to address that during the spring window a little bit. Uh, yeah. But defensively, they should be better. Um, they were able to re retain a lot of their coaching staff. Oregon's going to be a very good team, so I will have Oregon at number mm -hmm. five. And yeah. then last, I would say the last team I would probably say, and I'll just say this, I'm going to say Colorado. And it's not because I think that they're a great mm. team. It's just because of the yeah. conference that they're in. They're in the Big 12, dude. Like, the Big 12 is going to be terrible. Like, it is mm. a – this. Uh, when you take a look at the amount of teams that are in that Big 12 that, – that are in that Big 12 conference and the amount of star power or dudes that have left, it's ridiculous. Colorado yeah. 
if they don't win, if they don't win the Big 12 this year, I, I think it's a failure. A lot of people say, oh, well, they're going to win nine or 10 games. No, you should win nine or 10 games. You should honestly go 11 and one. That conference is garbage. Like, it is up for the taking for anybody there. I think it's going to be Utah and Colorado. They're going to be the only two teams competing. I, I, I really do. I, it, it's, it's, if you guys have the chance, look up, look up the Big 12 and look up those teams. And I'm telling you, and tell me I'm wrong. T tell me, I'm, tell me I'm wrong. Because yeah, that, I'm that conference is terrible. It's it, yeah. genuinely, it's terrible. It should be the college football playoff committee should be ashamed of themselves for allowing the Big 12 conference in the college football playoff. That, it looks yeah. like the freaking uh, what, what was that called? Uh, Coach Merrill, the whack. It looks like the mm -hmm. whack conference where Boise State was always the lone favorite. That's what it looks like. Yeah. It's the whack. Yeah, um, is it Arizona? It's Arizona and the Big Twelve, right? I think they are. They, yeah, they, they just got in there. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, they Arizona. might they might put up a little bit of a fight just from start. No, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to put up a fight when you got, got McMillan and back. you have uh, you got McMillan there and obviously you got the Fafita. quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, you know that. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be able to compete, but. I mean, well, let's say Colorado, the way they make it look like you do, you got freaking, uh, what's his name? Shador Sanders. He's up here. He's up here, man, disqualifying 6A, uh, 6A class football in high, in Texas. After yeah. like that, after like that's trash and that they don't produce players. He better look like the, you better look like the next coming of Peyton Manning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a big deal, man. I, yeah, that's, it, that's going to be, I mean, shoot. I, hmm, 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 hmm. It's hard because like, you, you don't want to be biased in this situation. And I look at this th from the standpoint of like players too, uh, who is returning, what, what's their depth look like. Um, I, I would agree with Georgia, Ohio state is one and two, uh, Texas at four, maybe, maybe, or, or sorry, Texas at three, maybe just from the standpoint of returning Quinn Ewers. Right. Um, but that's a tough one. Uh, I think you you could honestly put Oregon and Texas at three and four and rotate them either way, and I'd feel good about feel good about that. I think for five and six, um, I would not. And here's the thing: is th th this is this is this is difficult. It's hard to do. It's hard to sit there and, and pick these teams. I I will 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 put us at six. And the only reason is, is for, from the standpoint that not because I don't believe, but I think just the way the rankings play out for Bama, uh, the way everyone's going to look at it, they're going to talk about transition. They're going to talk about new coach. They're going to talk about Saban being gone. Do I truly believe we are number six? No. My, to be honest with you, I would actually put us in number three. But uh, over Oregon, no matter who they got, I'm going to tell you that right now, and Texas. You want to know why? Because you just got the coach to kick both their asses multiple years in a row, multiple times. So, and you have an ultra talented team. So that's where the true ranking is. But based on what they're, everyone's going to say, they, I, you, shoot, they probably even going to drop farther down to tell you the truth. But I, for now, I put them at six and then I'm going to actually stick Old Miss at five, just from the standpoint of what they loaded on in the transfer portal. So, um, but that's just the way they're going to play these rankings now. Do I truly think that's the play out? I think, I think we are above Oregon and Texas. I do talent wise, what we have, the coaching staff we have. I really, I really do. I like us at three, but I feel better about being ranked way lower. Like I personally rank me in the teens to start the season. Do not rank me in the top 10. I do not want to be ranked. At, I am not one of those guys, especially with, with these. I, I like the underdog approach. These guys are going to take this on the entire year. This, this is going to be the way I think Bama will be viewed. Um, is, is that there is going to be some locker room material. There already has been a lot that's been put out there. Um, and I like it. I, I think we're going to be really fresh. You know, uh, coach San, coach Al, you just said this, I can promise you. This staff is going to play more guys 100%. In the past years, we've had super talented guys sitting on the sidelines. The, this approach will also help us manage portal exits due to lack of playing time. I 100% agree with you, Coach Al. I think that's a, that is the point I think I make with all this is we're going to have a lot of versatility. We're going to have a lot of different sub packages. We're going to have a lot of different looks. I think what we're going to do is utilize guys and people are going to stay fresh and perform at a higher level for longer. It's like running a 100. It, the sprint is all about how long you can ma maintain top speed and how slow you decrease down from top speed. 
That's how you win and that's how you run your fastest time. So get the top speed as quickly as possible. How long do you maintain it? Um, and that's the way to do that, obviously, is to condition or to be fresh. And I'm, I'm telling you right now with all these guys, the way that rotation will work, if you're a guy in this sort of offense and this sort of defense, uh, D-line, uh, some of the, I would say definitely from the Wolf standpoint and the Bandit standpoint, uh, from our defensive back standpoint, besides maybe, I don't think you'll see necessarily like Malachi and, and Sab rotating out. Those guys, that won't be happening. Mm -hmm. But I could see it with, with some of our corner packages, right? Um, depending on what type of personnel we're lining up against. Uh, but for sure on the offensive side, like boom. And um, so, yeah, so that's that's my take on all that, you know. I will probably add, if it was like two more teams, I'll add, I just thought about this off my head. I would say Florida State, of course, because we don't want to be, of course, you know, mm. we don't want Florida State's coming at Kirk Herb Street, Kirk Herb Street um, mm -hmm. like they've been doing the entire time. So I'll put Florida State in that discussion. I think they're, they're going to be a good football <laughs> team. They just got DJ Uyunga Lele. Um, oh, God. Don't even, but dude, dude, we can't. Don't, Dude, DJ, I I, I mean, look, man, I know I, he's he's an he's an accurate. Um, yeah, uh, hell, Florida I, State's been worse than they were last year. Yeah, they are, but they're also in the AC conference. <laughs> that conference is garbage. Nah, that that, that that conference is it's it is straight up terrible. I mean, yeah, DJ can't complete a pass. You know, if, if you want if you want that dude, dude to, I got a camera that's literally less than two yards, like literally less than two feet away from me. He can't even hit that. I know we, we all know he can. Um, Holy but, I don't know what that guy does in the offseason that doesn't throw the ball very, very yeah, much. I don't know. And it's crazy as all hell, man, because I, I remember that um that documentary was him and Bryce Young when they were just competing against each other, man. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you would think DJ would be the next coming of Big Ben. I mean he's got he had he had the he was two fifty in high school, you know. Well he was on QB one. Um QB one, yeah. he was like the backup to who who's that kid? Some kid went to went to Ohio State, Miami, and every other school and trying to figure out to play football but yeah man uh img yeah and it, what was your other team coach jay cyrus florida state and who miami oh miami because mario cristobal doesn't because if he doesn't because i'm, I'm telling you hmm. that is the easiest schedule i've ever seen a power five team ever have it's, oh, it's, it's, it's schedule wise be, yeah yeah that miami schedule should be banned from college football mm -hmm. i actually i actually really felt bad for florida fans yeah. Because Florida's gonna have the same schedule next year, um, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be it's gonna be sad. I mean, I mean, well, first of all, I mean, I guess we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this eight conference crap um, next yeah, year, like, that's got to go. But yeah, the fact yeah. that Florida literally has back to back of the toughest schedules probably ever recorded, and then mm -hmm. you look at Miami's schedule where they basically the only competition on their schedule is for it, it should be is Florida State is a is a is an atrocity. They literally yeah. don't play anybody for the entirety of the year, um, except for AM. And uh except yeah. for AM and Florida State at, at the end. That's it. But but we don't know how good Texas AM is gonna be. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I you mm -hmm. know, based off the amount of people they lost and, and the amount of coaching turnover that's had to happen, I don't know if that team's gonna be um, you know, they haven't been good in the last two to three years. You know, I I just I don't really know about that. So they're more of a mystery. And then Florida State, Florida State is the legitimate team that we know with Mike Darvell. And the, you know, and of course the coach step, you just said it though, DGO and U Young Lele. I mean, yeah, they may win a lot of games, but he is a downgrade from Jordan Travis. Oh and yeah. That defense, I mean, yes, that, that defense last year was legit. That was a legit defense. Mm -hmm. You oh, lose was, a lot. Yeah, that yeah, you lose a lot of pieces, and that's that's just gonna be hard to replicate. Um, especially mm -hmm. because a lot of those dudes were transfers, they weren't developed players. Um, though a lot of those dudes were transfers, so I, I just I just I don't know I don't know if they're going to be the exact same like they were last year or, or they're going to be as deep. So this is Miami's conference for the taking. Um, I think Miami has they they have had they they by far have the best roster as far as talent in this in this conference. Um, they have the best quarterback by far. Um, the kid from uh from Washington State that by by far they oh, have the best Cam Ward. Yeah, Ward. yeah, Cam Ward's a stud. Yeah, I, mean, he's a I will say that he can that dude can throw the ball. Yeah. But problem is is. Here's the thing is like we you can grab all these guys. Uh, you know, right. everyone has Notre Dame highly ranked, right? I don't and I understand yeah. and I understand, I get it. Like, you know, Notre Dame, you know, the coach over there, Marcus, has done a great job. But um, and then they got the quarterback from Duke, right? Riley Leonard. So I think you get a lot of people who sit there and say, Well, you look at all the pieces they put together. I get that, but how many of your guys can you get to buy in? That is the key here. Like in order for your system to run 
in sync be synchronized and be smooth like how many guys do you get to buy in like does your team buy in we talk about player led teams and why they're important right um and i think what's interesting is when you reach into the portal too much and you get greedy you get portal greedy you are not necessarily grabbing guys who are all bought into your program you're grabbing guys that want to come in to that are kind of me guys maybe not all of them right but there's this when you start getting greedy you're going to grab me guys and when you have me guys you're not going to have that team camaraderie and if you don't have that when you get into tight games you're going to lose because they don't know how to fight as one right it's like 300 the movie there you know are the spartans right 300. Yeah, real life they, they yeah it's real life yep real life you know what i'm saying like 300 like that you have to fight as one to win those tight battles that's why i feel really good though when we talk about the schedule with the question that uh that smook asked us earlier regarding what we thought the record was going to be we do understand that caleb the board does not know how to lose winners win because that's what winners do that's his quote he doesn't know how to lose and he doesn't like to lose and if you get all the people in the right spot with the right mindset and everybody's bought in you have a player-led team those tight games are going to be maybe georgia uh maybe lsu maybe some of these uh, maybe one or two other teams we play maybe i'll tell you what the boars teams know how to win just all you got to do is look back on at the huskies you just got to look back at 2023 and the way those guys bought in as a player-led team that's why they won those tight games yep i will i will say this coach bro i, I will i will say this mm -hmm. for 300 that's a good reference but i will say this yeah unless, unless they have a snitch on their team who's gonna <laughs> who's gonna tell them where that where that passing is at and then all of a that's sudden right, they gonna get that passing it's all right it don't matter it, it don't matter how tight you are you you are it's a wrap man it is a wrap right. you know you know, what, you know what miami does you know, you know what they have a history of doing coach Murrow. they have a history of snitches Mm. They will pitch in order for them to get wins. Um, so yeah, we got we we, we got to watch it. I go live. We get, we got to watch out for that one though. But no, but seriously though, I think I, yeah. you make a good point as far as their continuity. Uh, matter of fact, Miami when they when the transfer portal first opened up, they actually had yeah. recorded wise, they've actually had one of like one of the greatest transfer portals ever. Uh, mm -hmm. But they didn't really win a lot of games. Remember they had they had um yeah they 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 uh who they who they had they had um. Phillips, they had Phillips, they had Phillips and Rousseau. I mean, I remember, yeah, like he was the backup behind uh by, behind Rousseau, you know, a little bit there. I mean, they they had a really really good transfer portal, um, and yet it just it didn't get them that that many wins, right? Because of the because of the Kamar, the, you know, for the most part, the, of what, what that was kind of going on with. Um, so I mean, yeah, we'll see. Because like I said, DJ Uniglay, like how bought is how bought in it? You know, it, you know, is he into the process? Ward literally waited to the last second of the yeah. uh, of the winter window in order for him to get in there because he was contemplating on going to the nfl draft so how really bought it is he in or is he just going there simply because you know what he looked at it he actually declared backed out because he was supposed to go to miami for a long time he you know he yep. he mm -hmm. wanted to, that that tells me coach Murrow. he wanted to look for better options he wanted better options are on the oh table. yeah no. and he just didn't see it he didn't see the better yep. options and so I think my I think by the time he came out, Miami was the was the team because they desperately were still looking for a starting quarterback. That was mm. the team that was on their roster, and he decided to kind of go towards that. And so, yeah, I mean, how bought how bought in is he really, or is he just going to go there just to improve his draft stock? And nonetheless, because yeah, you know, again, you can improve your draft stock and still be still have a mediocre team, still produce mediocre results. Um, yeah, and so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens there, but. Yeah, if Miami can't win 10 games, then Mario Cristobal needs to be fired. You need to move on from him um, because this is the mm -hmm. easiest he's ever going to be. And um, yep. I, I just, man, that should be a top 10 team. The roster is there. I mean, the offensive line is going to be – it could be elite. That offensive line is going to be yeah. really good. Their defensive line is going to be very, very good. Um, I, I just, man, I just – I don't see – if Miami doesn't win more than 10 games, why Mario Cristobal should be the head coach for the future. I, I, just, I just don't really see it. No, I, not 100, man. I, I don't either. I don't get that. Like, um, it, it, it's just, man, we'll just continue with like the transition of all these different teams and uh, coaches going here and there. And it's constant. Like th that's the, that, I mean, that's why you got to have a coach who's really good at, at getting his players to right. believe, believe in the vision, believe in, in, 
and what we are what we are selling uh, and i hate i hate saying selling because we always associate it with someone maybe trying to make you get something that you don't need or or shouldn't want but what it comes down to is believe in the vision that is being shown to you from a standpoint that hey this this works this system everything about it um as long as you believe you know what i'm saying it works it, you know and so i'm excited to see these guys and what they're doing and i just i you know yeah we look at these other other teams and and how these seasons are going to go i just do not think i think you're, yeah these other teams are going to have success for sure but i think with kd you have something very unique and everywhere he goes he just wins um and i love what the what the guys are doing i'm you know one of the most exciting players and guys i can't wait to watch play and just 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 make everybody shut up is is mill row in the end that that for me is like the most i think that is one of the, one that going to be one of the best stories man and espn probably be a big story on how you know they tell him he can't play quarterback and all all the stuff miller is going to be up there holding the heisman giving everybody the finger you know <laughs> oh you're muted jay your mic, your mic, Jay. You're muted, dude. I see it. See, so, yeah, I tell you, man, it's that oh, snitch. Yeah. It's that snitch from yeah. 300. Just giving away, just giving mm -hmm. away the plans. No, but um, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I think for the most part, man, I, Jalen, if Jay, if Jalen Miro wins the Heisman Trophy, man, yeah, that would literally will be one of the greatest stories, um, at least during our school history, right? For, you know, for a quarterback that really defied all the odds, mm -hmm. um, for a guy that, yeah, his own, his, his own coaches told him that he simply can't play within the offense and yeah, man. you know for that to really happen and a lot of fans really did kind of doubt him and the path he really took to win the heisman would be an amazing story um mm -hmm. i mean you guys already know I, I think this kid has the big he has the opportunity of being possibly the first quarterback taken because oh yeah know, shador came back because he said he wanted to be the number one guy i still think mm -hmm. he might not be the number one guy because i mean but we said go ahead no, I was about to say because if you look at this class, it's not it's not really a great class. Not a mm. great class of quarterbacks is gonna come out, at least for this year so far, right? It could be way different yeah. um, towards the end of the season. But you look at Jalen Miro's his look up, 6'2, 220 pounds. He is bulked mm. up like a running back. Um, bulk, bulked up like a running back. He's got the athleticism, right? He has all the physical tools, he has all the physical intangibles for mm. what NFL teams want within a quarterback, especially in today's game, thanks to guys like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, uh, mm. right? I'll even go far to say like even like a, a, a very early version of Dak Prescott when he was kind of shocking the league a little bit. Yeah. Kind yeah. of forget how athletic he actually was before the injuries kind of came down. Mm. Uh, right? Like it, like in today's game, man, mm. it's – I think we're kind of – move. We're, we're moving away from the, the pro pocket guy, right? Because yeah. the pro pocket guy is starting to really become, honestly, one of the more athletic players on the team because they all mm -hmm. can run now. Like Brock Purdy right. is now known as the most least athletic guy, yet that dude mm -hmm. can run. Brock Purdy is not a, he's not in a mobile quarterback. He's a very mobile quarterback. So yeah. I think that, that stigma is now starting to kind of die down. And now these brand age guys like a Jalen Miro is really starting to really come into the fold and starting to, you know, in a way to kind of take over the league. So. I think that Jalen Merrill has a big opportunity, especially with Kalen DeBoer within this offense, mm -hmm. to be possibly a top draft pick. And again, last year with Jaden Daniels, we've seen it where, you know, again, Arizona State, he was able to kind of show signs, but mm -hmm. he didn't make the full use of his potential until he came to LSU in year two, right? It wasn't year one. Year one, where, you know, year one was kind of very similar to Jalen Merrill's year. Year two was when he took forward because that's when it was a full kind of revitalization of the offense. Yeah. And that's where it really took it to a completely different level. And you saw the improvements of Malik Neighbors. You saw Brian yeah. Thomas was nothing. Um, and I'm not mm -hmm. saying like meaningfully, but we all know like statistically, he didn't really produce on the field yeah. until his junior year. That's where he really took off. And that's and when you take a look at the amount of weapons that this offense has available, everything is look it looks like it's gonna come full circle because talent wise, like you just you know, like we've all pointed out, this is the most talent DeBoer has ever had in his entire life. As far as as far as as far as coaching, and yeah, it, it, I mean, for when, when you know when we were losing players left and right, and we're in panic mode, I can guarantee you, Kalen DeBoer was looking at this team like it's Candyland, right? Oh, because for it's, sure. Like, it, it's like, wait a minute, like wait a minute, I have this player, this player, like mm -hmm. these are players, like these are like we we're probably evaluating these players, and we're like, and eh, we, we might as well just leave these guys alone because there's no way in hell they're gonna we gonna get them. 
There's no way in hell. Yeah. And now yeah. that they're in his disposal, man, I, man, it's just, I, I, I just. I just can't wait. I, I think that this is going to be an elite mm. offense. I think that this is going to be a very explosive offense. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if he's going to surpass Michael Penix as far as his skill set, but he's going to. I think he's going to come pretty damn close to it. I think he can come pretty I damn like, close to it. And with the I like inclusion, of legs, I think it's going to be great. I, yeah. I, just, I can't wait. I can't wait, man, to see what the. I can't wait for a day uh, just to kind of put people on notice. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how many people, Coach, Mer uh, Coach Merrill, that I, how many people that I've I had to try to convince. I'm like, listen, y'all will trash Jalen Merrill now. I'm telling you, this dude's going to be a top pick. He's going to be a top Dude. quarterback, man. And it's, I, it's to a point where I'm just going to leave it alone and say, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah I'm just going to make y'all watch. Watch and see. Well, yeah, and I see I see everybody's comments. Trust me, I'm reading them as they pop down. And uh, and I get it, and and I do come from a different side of this. But let me let me ask you guys all this while you're sitting here, right? Um, do you guys think Kalen DeBoer doesn't know how to look at a quarterback and tell us if he's good or not? That that should be an easy answer. Your answer should be, of course he can. What it what Kalen? We're not talking about Kalen DeBoer. Well, actually, you are because here's why I'm trying to tell you guys. Is do you think DeBoer is going to come out in in the media and say that Milrow is picking up on this offense better than everybody else, or that Milrow looks really good when he doesn't? Do you think DeBoer is just going to float that out there and then it's not going to be the case? I don't need to go through all the stats. I don't need to walk through stat lines to prove my point. I don't need to do all these special things to prove my point. All I got to do is go to the the guy who actually knows it all, right? And have to hear what he has to say and he's already said it multiple times so if anybody sits there and has to question what kd who's a quarterback whisperer along with the the truth of everybody basically on that offensive side of the ball coach wise and he is directly working with him along along with nick sheridan who develops michael Penix into a potential heisman winner some people feel like he should have won the heisman right that is where you start to tell yourself, right? Um, I'm just saying, I, I like explaining my basis is useless, right? Because at that point, the thing is, is I have the, an expert who already did it for me, right? Mm -hmm. That's all you got to say to that. There's not, you don't really even got to argue that. Um, I mean, you just look at the quarterback, see what he did with each quarterback he's been with, every program he's been at, period. We don't even got to question it anymore. So, you know, that's, I, I mean, that's all you say is like, that's, you know, and I, I know these are all fair questions though, that you guys are asking and it's, and it's hard because you do want to just look at someone's past and criticize the shit out of them. I mean, it's the truth because especially if they were, they messed up or they did all these things wrong, but I will say, you know, you, we got to make sure we give a dude a chance. And if that person's putting in the work and we're seeing it happen, and, and there's they actually have that mindset that they want to be that person that that type of player whatever it is and they are putting in that work and we're seeing it happen guess what you, there's not a lot you can say to someone's actions yeah actions speak louder than words right it's going to happen i trust in that i believe in that that's just my humble opinion stolen from coach sean truth is in the details people <laughs> um now coach man, Sean, you I gotta, love it, dude. You gotta say a light coach Sean. You gotta say the truth. Is the, in the truth movie. is in the details. Exactly. Man, I got a voice like that though, man. He got the best voice. But I think uh yeah, I, I don't know if you got one more thing you want to throw out there, Coach Jay. But this is we we at the end of the evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. I think we're at the end of the evening. So Coach Jay, you got anything to wrap this up? Um, yeah, I guess we could yeah, talk about like just real quick. I you know, um what do you think about the uh because Josh Pate, he talked about this, how pretty much he he pretty much described what I what I've been saying the entire time, and that's judgment day. He said the spring window mm. he said, Oh yeah. And I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna quote a word for word, but basically he said, I don't think a lot of people really truly understand mm. how big the spring window is gonna be and how chaotic it could be. Um because of what you know because again this creates another opportunity for a lot of players who based off of what happens during their spring game right based off what happens during their spring their spring game or spring practices maybe coaches leave um mm -hmm. maybe particular, you know again it, it, it's just you just never know the situation but he talked about how he believes it's going to be extremely chaotic 
kind of like what are your thoughts about the spring window? Do you think that could be chaotic? And do you think that's going to play in Alabama's favor? I do. I, I do think we will see some positivity. We could see one or two guys bounce. I mean, it just, that's the like, it could happen, maybe. But there, the interesting article uh, with Devonta Smith, and for those of you who were in here earlier, I talked about that a little bit, right? Um, is, uh, is his article on loyalty, right? And what, the, what he sees from this team, his mindset, what the leaders are saying on this team. Like I said, this is a player led team. Those teams typically have a very tight knit group of everybody. So, uh, we will see. I'll, uh, I'd be surprised, right? Um, if, if we see, you know, more than one or two, maybe try to jump ship, but well, again, at the, this, this portal is going to be interesting. I think from a standpoint of what we could pick up, I, I do think there will be some options there. I do think we'll have some additions, uh, maybe at offensive line, maybe in defensive backs. Um, but overall I can say this, I think this will probably be this crazy because this will be the last year of this this chaos i think they will fix it before mm -hmm. next season 100 percent. so uh, i think we're all in for an extremely fun and uh interesting ride with the transfer portal but i do feel good from the standpoint of uh what's going on at bama i think there's some players out there who are mature enough to see that and recognize that and they want to be a part of that so I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, you know how I feel. I, I think that this is going to be a very chaotic time period. I think I do agree mm -hmm. with you. I think this is going to be the last year before they actually strip part, you know, until they actually kind of put some sort of stipulation on this. Um, I just can't wait, man. Um, all right, listen, I, I already text Coach Schmoop. Um, I don't know if he's – well, he was no, I'm going to make him do it. He's going to do it for me. Um, but, yeah, yeah, when that day happens, we are playing the Game of Thrones theme music for the entire team. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like, that – we're, we're like making that, that happen. Uh, we are playing it. Mm -hmm. I, I – I, Fully confident of what is going to happen. We, I, I might switch it up. We might, we, we might. I don't know. I think we might have to do a poll between like what's, what's more intimidating to you, the Game of Thrones one, the Undertaker theme, the Lord of the Rings one. Man, I'm, I'm at the Game of Thrones one really stands out, right? Yeah, I, like I don't know, man. Like it stands out. You know, honestly, we could just play Yellowstone theme too. Oh, we do. That's not bad one either, man. Everyone knows that one. We do. I, you know, I like. Listen, <laughs> Uh, what, 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 what like what's those new shows 19 1923 yeah, like i think there's 1980 yeah, I don't want it, man. they got some, they got some intimidating nasty things all sorts of stuff coming uh, out man oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean like, like i said we might just do like a fan poll or something and, and we'll yeah that'd be cool but yeah no we yeah. we we gotta i'm telling you guys it, it's gonna be very mm -hmm. very intimidating um for a lot of college ball teams that's why we have these theme songs planned we don't yeah. I, we may lose some players here and there. That's probably going to be suspected. Um, but overall, wise, no, I'm 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 excited. I think there's going to be a lot of chaos, and I, you know, I think it's, oof, I, man, it, listen, it may not even go in our favor, but I just to watch everybody else freak out and panic and like Godzilla's just storming through. It's just I, I think it's going to be hilarious. I I I, oh, I, yeah. I, I have that uh, <laughs> that date circled already on my calendar. I just I, I can't wait for it, man. But. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. as we uh, start to uh, kind of wind down a little bit, I, I don't, I, any, any last things you want to say before we kind of get off here? Uh, I think for, for us, man, it's been a fun day. Um, it's cool seeing you guys twice today. It's kind of a, a longer a longer day, I think, on my end at least. I mean, I, me and Ty ran like two hours today, so we were jumping. But uh, I know we'll be back with you tomorrow. Let me see if I got a schedule by a chance. I don't think there's one out right now, but um, – but you know, just keep heads up. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun day, I'm sure, tomorrow too. And uh, pay attention, and then and, and you know, you can always click that notify me too. And Casey Jones, man, thank you very much. That's uh, it's always cool to hear. Appreciate that ten dollars super chat. This is a good. This is just for a good discussion. Thanks, guys. No, one hundred percent. We appreciate you. Um, and all of us, the whole team here at Bama Football on YouTube, we really do appreciate you guys as you exit out tonight. The the show. Make sure you hit the thumbs up for us. Um, it, we, we love bringing this to you. The only way we can do that is by continuing to build on on what or Kyle and everyone, he, all the coaches here have already done, uh, especially Kyle. We give him a big round of applause and T. And, um, and yeah, hit those thumbs up. Think about becoming a subscriber. I know that we, we try to bring it every single day. Uh, and uh, become a fan funder. There uh, should be a link at the top of the screen here. Let me take a peek. Uh, yes, top upper left of your screen, uh, subscribe, and you can become a fan funder. And again, the Super Chats, we really appreciate those when you guys throw those out there. It means a lot to us. So uh, other than that, 
Uh, that is it for us. And we hope, I think, I know on my end that it's going to be exciting to see you guys tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a great evening. Anything else, Coach Jay? No, that is about it, man. That is about it. Like I said, follow me on Twitter. Twitter handle is like mm -hmm. right below, Chance716. So Coach, make sure to follow uh, Coach Merrill um, as mm -hmm. well on all his kind of social media platforms. Of course, make sure to also follow Bama Football on, on YouTube with Kyle Henderson on Twitter. Um, yep. Make sure to follow all the coaches. Yeah, Coach Schmook. I know he's, uh, he's, he's trending on social media all the time. He's, he's doing mm -hmm. his thing. Coach Sean getting a lot more active on social media. So, yeah, make sure to kind of follow us all. Make, shout out to Ty Hayes. Again, I know, again, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Coach Merrill, yeah, he's been going strong. He's been going on, man, he's been going on strong, man, like a like a bull. Yeah, like man, a party wild. Man. <laughs> so weird. It's been good though. It's been good. No, I appreciate it, man. Like I do 100 percent And I uh, appreciate all the coaches on here. And it's always fun to bring you guys this stuff. So with that on my end, here's a big roll tide, and you guys have a great, great end of the night. Yep, Peace so out. Okay, and we're out. Oh, spend one.